Back to our, back to our class one. This story has amazingly Canadian vibes. I'll take, I'll trust you on that. I right, get out of first person mode. I don't even know how to get out. Of, how to get out of first person mode? Press some buttons, guys. There we go. What's up, Malty? Welcome. V? There's no V button. Oh, oh, you mean on the keyboard. I'm a uh, controller user myself. Very Canadian vibes. Dude, there's so many places I want to visit right now. I was just going to say I want to visit Canada, but right now I just want to visit like everywhere that exists. Uh, let me make sure I'm keeping an eye on the Discord, just in case somebody wants to... Alright, someone's joining just Discord. We can do calls. Um... So basically, we're chilling here uh, till, I guess that would be 6 PST, till the end of the hour. And uh, at which point, Thinkwort will show up. I will blitz Thinkwort with a series of questions. Um, right at, when he comes in, I'm just going to be like, boom, like favorite color, like what clothes are you wearing? Like, how do you feel? Like, what's your name? Like, I, I guess I shouldn't ask him his name, but I'm just going to blitz him with that. And, um, what's up, Zach? Luke Lightman, I ate some syrup on snow in Montreal once. Pretty tasty. But they got tasty snow up there. So, yeah, we're going to get Think Word in, chat with him for an hour, ask him whatever you guys want. Um, we had some questions from Twitter as well, which is partially overlapping by our audience here, I believe. Um, oh, man, my... Why is that still showing? Sorry. Pardon this foolishness. And then we'll have another hour so where we can just chill. We can just sort of recap what we learned from Mr. Thinkwort. Mr. Dr. Thinkwort, sir. And, um, and that'll be the show. So I'm kind of like, I don't really, to be honest, I don't really have a super tight plan for the first hour and the last hour. What's up, Vogue Frey? Except for to chill with you guys. Which is why we do this. Good evening, Sir Vogel Fry. Good old days before they changed the snow recipe. You know, isn't that like there's multiple types of ice? You ever hear about this? There's like Ice 9 and like Ice 7 and like one of them is like... I don't know. Explosive or something? Am I crazy? Hey, look, there's a there's a rabbit. No, oh, I'm rolling my car down now. Never mind about the rabbit. Explosive ice. I swear this is a thing. I don't know. I don't know if it's explosive. There's just one of them has this, some very special property. Ice is a rock. Change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, ice is a rock, I'm, I'm convinced. <laughs> no, it's a crystal. Maybe ice is like a crystal. <laughs> Diamond equals bling equals rice. Ice equals rock. I feel like there are two types of rocks. Crystals and rocks. <laughs> Over says rocks are a form of ice. You can melt rocks, I think, right? Lava is just stony water. Oh god. Um So we're in an area where we got a lot of words. Everything can be melted with enough heat. We're just fleshy ice. Um I think I, one of my tweets from, like, months ago was about the melting temperature of meat. <laughs> like, how do you melt meat? Remember Adam, thou art ice. Meat is basically water already. Some meat more than others. You got some, you know, more kind of 
jiggle physics type meat and other <laughs> molten jerky. Ice to meet you, Luke. Dude, molten jerky should be somebody's Twitter handle. Somebody should snap that up right now as an alt or something. Molten jerky. Dude, that's pretty good. I think I like this music. I, I wasn't sure at first, but I think I like it. I feel like I'm doing something... I feel like it's like the 18th century, and I'm in a French chateau playing GTA V. Snap up that Urban Address. Do the Urban Addresses have words in them? Turns out your Nazi cosmological theories where everything is ice made as a competitor to relativity. Is that an actual thing? That's wacky shit, dude. Molten jerky sounds like a maybe gray alt. I don't know how maybe feels about that. <laughs> Welt ice free. There is an L in there. Einstein was Jewish, so his theory wasn't going to fly with him. This is just like the uh, the Soviets and and what's his what's his name? Uh oh, that's a woman I almost killed. But I'm going to take her car. Sorry, man. Thulean physics. Oh, this car looks sick. Let's get in it. What's up, Wandre? Wandre, if you ever want to hype something on this, let me know. Your, your thing you've been working on. Yeah, genetics and like lysenkoism. Look at this douchebag on his bike. He's so skinny. Anyway. Hey, look. There's a plane above. That's like what we're going to do later. Um, what question are you most excited to ask Wirt? What I want to do... What is this guy doing? Is he just standing there? Oh yeah, I forgot I've got... Oh, I forgot I've got all the cheats on, so I can jump. Take the plane? Alright, let's find the plane. What question am I most excited to ask Wirt? Um, I want to... Well, first let's find this plane. I'm not seeing plane, I'm just seeing... <laughs> GTA Flight Simulator. That's right. Yeah, dude, you can get way up there. Let's just go... Let's see how high we can get. I want to ask Wirt about, like, his... I just want to resolve the riddle. I want to. I want to solve the riddle of steel. You know what I'm saying? I want to get Wurtz like angle on life. So I want to understand. Like it seems like a little weird to say like the wholesomeness thing, but there is this elephant in the room. <laughs> Where is even the sky? Where? What is even below us? Where is even the map? There's this elephant in the room, which is that a lot of us are 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 deviants. And uh, depraved souls with no sense of goodness whatsoever, and uh, and I feel like Thinkwort is just like a decent dude, like sharing pictures of like chipmunks and stuff. And I, I just kind of want to know like why he does it and where where he's coming from with that. All right, let's get back down to the ground. There's not much to do up here. This is some kind of like utopian hell. Oh yeah, wait, I can stick us. I can get us all real dizzy. Woohoo. Alright, enough of that. Let's go down. Down. Playing an FPS game while talking about something complicated always feels good to me. It keeps me stimulated and prevents the conversation from slowing down too much in order to get excessively abstract. Yeah, it's, <laughs> the game as a throttle is about on getting too abstract. That doesn't always work on this show. I think we sometimes get a little abstract. But I... The tour space needs Hesperic to, to come back. I actually don't know who that is. So, um, I'm actually, I'm like about a year into like Twitter dump. Or like a few months more than a year. So like, I don't know, 15 months. Go through that guy's account. Can someone drop his name in the Discord or something like that? Hesperic. I could also just write it down. One of the best. Yeah, I'll take a look. Philosophers on Twitch play Call of Duty. I have a friend who's actually good at, like, FPS 
games and this dude um who knows he might be in the chat right now this dude's like a fucking grandmaster in rocket league which is not an fps but you know it's some indication of optimization power and he recommended me this software for learning to play fps's where it's a trainer it's called kovax or something like that like kovax 2.0 and you basically dude look at this sign Global warming is baloney. <laughs> I love this game. Um, this Kovacs thing, it like tells you where to click on the screen and like times you and stuff. And it's just like, you apparently you can use this software and it's just a trainer for getting a lot better at FPSs. I grew up playing console games. So like on console, you just cannot get as good at FPS as you can. Like with a PC, just clicking. Um, I have learned, so I don't know. This Kovacs thing seemed kind of interesting. Ask Think Work, why are you good? There's this flash game that makes you click on targets on the screen, but your mouth, your your mouth, uh oh, that's creepy. Your mouse goes invisible. Use it for league skill shot training. Back when I played, huh? What's up, half minute man? Memorable console games, dog. I'm a I'm a Kojima fan till I die. I don't give a fuck what he makes. I love it. I'm a Hideo Kojima fan. So so the Metal Gear Solid games, especially Metal Gear Solid Three, was a was a big um big one for me. Dude, hell yeah, Luke Thrust. I um that's one. I love the whole Bioware stuff. Can't watch your mouse in the same way. You can't be caught by your sword. The Zen of Vidya. Yeah, dude. I feel like someone should should like make a YouTube channel where they're doing that, just like fucking quoting Musashi and playing games. Um. What was I just saying? Games. Um. Yeah, the whole Bioware thing. So the Mass Effect games. I. The first game that truly entranced me. Oh, that's an animal. That truly entranced me was Baldur's Gate Two. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. <laughs> that I had just recommended a gaming philosophy uh, <laughs> content come into existence. <laughs> um, and that's kind of what I'm doing here. M O T M O. What's the M? Metal Gear. Musashi on Twitch. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, Baldur's Gate 2 Shadows of Am um, like pilled me on games. I just I played that game and I was just like, holy shit, I did not know. Yeah, I'm gonna knock this guy off the cliff. No, oh, I knocked myself off the cliff. It didn't work. What's up, MCon? Welcome. We're just chilling. We've got our sort of long pre-game show, and then we got a post-game show, and in between we're gonna have uh think we're on. Can be sick. Oh, yeah, I gotta keep looking at the call. Who wants to do a call? I'm, let's open it up for calls. So anybody who wants to, to get in, let me know. And if I don't notice, you just like say something in chat. But um, that would be through the Discord that that is done. I'll just fucking take calls from anybody. We can shoot the shit. And if no one else calls in, we can just shoot the shit even longer. Oh yeah, thanks Zach for putting that guy in the in the Discord. Asked for advice for teaching ethics to college students on Twitter, and someone suggested Planescape Torment as a learning aid, which I really respected, even if it's impractical without building a course around it. I played, um... I didn't play enough of Planescape to really get the idea. Um, and I did start playing the new one, which was maybe stupid of me, because, like, I don't know, it's, like, not as OG or something. There is a new one. Um... I might have even been playing it on PS4. But I, I have a, a couple friends who I really respect their, like, taste in fiction, and they love Planescape. Like, a lot of the, like, the Moral Dilemma stuff. Man, I could do a whole thing about, like, Moral Dilemmas in video games and when that's done well and when it's just boring as hell. You can read the novel? There's a novel? Okay, I didn't know that. Ah, uh, yeah. The soft sounds of Schubert. Schubert. I didn't know that there was a novel. Um, 
Dragon Age, I loved. Um, what other games? I don't know, when I was even younger than that, I played, like, Myst. Um, I don't know how many people these... I mean, people who were around then, who played games, kind of kind of know Myst, but I don't know how many... Do kids these days know Myst? No idea. I guess they don't play Myst, they play, um... What's that puzzle game that came out? Um, what is that puzzle game? You just spawn the the witness, the witness. I think it's called the witness. Do you like Morrowind? Um, yes, I played um, a bunch of those. I played Oblivion first. <laughs> I like Fallout. Um, in fact, before I turned this into like a interview channel, I was streaming just games and shit, and um, I played a bunch of Fallout. New Vegas, with uh, graphics mods, which was fun. Uh, and, yeah. But it, it, that's the same guys as... That's Bethesda, right? Yeah, like all that shit. I think the story often leaves something to be desired, but that's not, like, the point. It's not quite the point. Okay, let's go to the, uh... Let's go over here. What's it called? Venice Beach? Let's get us to Venice Beach. Let's see Arnold's... Old Arnold's stomping grounds. Why don't we? For those who don't know, this game is... Ba uh, this world is based on... This is L.A., basically. Yeah. yeah, I think Marwan had a dedicated writer, whereas later it was not that good, yeah. They do this... They, they distribute it across, like, a lot of writers. Like, they have just, like, a huge team of writers, and they get the writers to, like, write quests, and they happen to kind of have a reasonably... God, this is difficult to do without killing anybody. A reasonably consistent, like, ontology of, like, gods and all this stuff. Um, but, like, having that many writers? Like, what the hell, man? How's that gonna work? Needing voice hacking for everything killed the story depth. Oh, yeah. Does everyone talk in those games? Alright. Oh, ooh. I was trying to honk. Sorry, dude. Ooh. Not wholesome. Not wholesome. Let's fly away. That's wholesome. Let's run away from our crimes. I was just trying to go to the place in Venice Beach where the, where the weightlifting happens. Where is that? It's right by here. Oblivion forward. It's all spoken. Yeah. I see. Oh. Oop. Oopa. Dude, I want to go to L.A. I've only been a couple times. I always have a great time. In fact, in this little shop, I used the bathroom and charged my phone in L.A. You got a call on subject? Hell yeah, dude. Oh, let me get... I got to do this a little better. You want to talk about wholesomeness and depravity? Sweet. We can test your theories. Just get on the... Okay, you're in the lobby. All right, guys, we're going to get Vogelfrey on. Yo, Doc, say something so I can hear your voice. Oh, I've got to mute the Twitch. Can, uh, can you... Yeah, yeah, can you I can me? hear you. Great. Also, chat, you got to let me know if you can't hear anybody, because sometimes there's weird shit with uh, audio, and but I think it should be good. Um, how's it going, dude? Oh, it's going pretty good. I'm, I'm tired. Uh, had a friend over to do jujitsu with. A friend, um, huh? Yes. Jiu-jitsu, not, huh? Not in a sexual <laughs> sense. I didn't say that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> cool. We only enjoy the higher uh, and more sophisticated no. Uh yeah. Anyway, no. So uh, we have these two. I, You know, you were just talking about, like, a bunch of depraved people. Right and the internet and depravity and the internet. And it's an interesting subject because there are these two forces on the internet. There's like a lot of depravity and there's also a lot of wholesomeness. Right. Um, and one thought I've had about this subject is if it's like the depravity itself doesn't call the wholesomeness forth on some level. Hmm. I've seen on stuff like 4chan, you know, infamous home of depravity on the internet it's like Indeed. you have all of this stuff all of this 
racism and people destroying their lives and people making bad decisions and then like someone makes a post about like rocks making them happy or like right. they're like thank you hot chocolate and like this kind of thing right and i i wonder if it's almost like a collective dark night of the soul where uh -huh. it's like you you turn over every sacred thing you rip all the veils you you do as much degeneracy as you can do on the internet and then it's like you're like okay like it it hasn't given you something like you're, uh -huh. you've been looking for something that's why i think people i think when people engage in this they are often looking for something seeing what happens yeah. when they engage in it and it, it doesn't quite click and then this almost enables a, a like truer interaction with wholesomeness right um, because I mean, I really, it's just like, I have seen some of the stuff that I view as like the most wholesome stuff I've ever seen mm -hmm. on the internet in like specifically depraved places or from people I might otherwise consider depraved. Right. And that's, that's really fascinating. It's like, why are these things together? It's, that is interesting. I, I like that. It kind of fits like a, you know, yin yang intuition, you know, sort of equal and opposite reactions kind of idea. Um, yeah. The, or even if it, less committed on that specific front, you can just kind of have there be like a, a pe like a pendulum or something. Like, um, I feel like you and I probably talked before about like the 90s and early 2000s as like, early 2000s, 2000s especially is a weird time. And the 90s mm -hmm. is like, from now, you know, from the current per perspective, looking back looks like positively like, like utopian almost just like, um, yeah, you know the the West Wing thing. Uh -huh. West Wing is a, a wholesome show in some ways. Right, it's, it's like I think to the extent that West Wing is like not exactly wholesome. A lot of that is like in retrospect, right? It's it's yeah. It's well, it, yeah, it's the show is trying to be wholesome, right? And if you ignore everything politically that has happened since that show, right, you can kind of regard it as wholesome, <laughs> right, right, right? Um, is but when did Buffy come out? Because that strikes me as another show where it's like things work out in a particular way. It's like very. I had it's. I bet someone in the in chat is. I bet we've got a Buffy fan in the chat. Um, it's set in the nineties, I think. Yeah, it's Buffy. it's around then. I mean, I feel like it's like. Hey, I guess you might as well. Nineteen ninety seven. Yeah. Is that when it's? That's like the first season. I think that's the first season. Right. Based on 1992 film of the same name. Oh, there's a movie. Luther says 9703. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean, I, I think there was sort of a, you know, I, I was tweeting recently about how America was sort of born on ascendant power. It's like the Civil War is like kind of a blip, but like mm. in the grand scheme of things, like a four or five year Civil War is like not. <laughs> you know, it's it's awful. To, it's like obviously a lot of people died, and it was a problem. Right. But in the like grand the political scheme of things, that's kind of a blip. And like plenty mm. of countries have had thirty year long like civil conflicts or, that just yeah. drag on and on and on. Or, or, um, or many or many civil wars or whatever. Yeah, but then America sort of hit its first like really really big optimism like blip with like Nixon and Vietnam. Mm. Um, and then the 90s was sort of a, I, I don't know, I think it was like almost a reaction. It was like, hmm. uh, you know, there had been this Vietnam thing, there had been the Reagan thing, and then it was like the USSR just kind of like vanished. And you have Fukuyama right. writing The End of History, which like, he, he gets a lot of shit about that, because... But at the end of the book, he's kind of like, I think he calls a lot of stuff about like people becoming bored. Yeah. And the international order not fulfilling people um the sort of international democratic order not fulfilling people mm -hmm. but but yeah it's like this reconsolidation after vietnam where people try to hold on to this optimism again mm -hmm. um in in the matrix uh agent smith just describes the 90s as the peak of human civilization right which i thought was really interesting right. uh and when is, is the matrix like 2001 99 or 98 i thought Done. Yeah, you're right. It's it's 99. Yeah. Fukuyama's more right than wrong. Torvald says 90s seem like the point where future expectations turn indefinite as opposed to specific. That's an interesting take. That could be true. I think Teal does see something like that. Like the 90s. Um, 
Did we get a... Did Vecnan show up? Yeah. Yeah, he's here. I don't see... Hello, Vec. Where you at, Vecnan? I am here. What's up, dog? Hey, let's get in this plane. Can I fly this thing? Let's see if I can fly this. What even is this? It doesn't look... No, it's just a... F Wait. No, it works. <laughs> oh, he's... We're getting in the, the big guy. Zuthros asks if we can blame, blame the shift, shift entirely, entirely on my own. It definitely yeah. feels like a triggering event, but like, I don't know. Like, 9 11 let us expose a lot of institutional failures by like 2005, by, by the point it became very clear in general that. Uh, we weren't going to like solve the problem. That there was mm -hmm. not not going to be a sort of successful um, nation building effort in any of these places that we were getting involved in. Um, and so I think it was like nine eleven was yeah it was like a, a Vietnam style event where it's like that specific event didn't have to happen, but like the current power would have exposed itself. Mm. Um, in some way, eventually. Oh shit! I'm being shot at. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Man. dude. Can you can you hit him? Can you fucking? I, I mean, can I swear on this show? <laughs> can you hit him out of the air? Can you just like? I can probably do all kinds of things. I, I don't know where he is. Let me see if I can shoot. I don't think I can shoot with this. I just wanted to be inside this. Let's just look at the inside of this plane, and how bad it is compared to Microsoft Flight Simulator. <laughs> It's not so bad. They got a lot of... Look, those dials don't even move. Oh, no, they do move. Hey, the dials kind of move. That's pretty cool. There's like a radar thing. All right, these, this is actually kind of cool. But it's nothing co compared to my... My flight simulator. Oh, I saw a blip. There's a there's blips on your radar thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's actually... Oh, I... Pick it, like, I don't know if it's pretending to pick something up or if it's actually... I gotta do this one. I do need to read Fukuyama myself. I never actually have. That's not. Uh... I, I stand Fukuyama. I really enjoyed him. Origins of Political Order. Uh, he's. I think he's very sophisticated. I'm not sure if I would go so far as to say Straussian, but like mm -hmm. he's got a lot of layers. Right, like an onion. Yes, like an onion. <laughs> Are those other planes to your left? Yeah. We can try to why, cause. Some why are you action. angling towards the buildings, Kersey? <laughs> I'm. I listen. I'm providing Overwatch. I'm protecting the city. Yeah. Here, let's hit. Yeah. Let's do this. Uh, I I had another. Oh, here we go. I don't know. I'm so slow. Oh no! Can I, I? Oh yeah, I can speed up. Oh, let's go! Let's go! Oh no! I just banged into it. Oh man, that is that. Wait, did it is barrel roll? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> I think it's going into a, a death this, spin. That, be I, a, I think you took it out. This really is a worse flying game than Microsoft Flight Simulator. But I, we do just need to watch this happen. Boom. Oh. Thankfully, I have immortal vehicles on, so I can just hop out. My suspicion would be that institutional questions aside, the 2000s would be like an extended 90s and probably hitting the same crash by the end of the decade. 9-11 hadn't happened. <laughs> that was dark. Wandre, it's just a game. <laughs> Here, I can... I'm, I'm gonna spawn a boat. Uh, vehicle options. I'm having another thought about, about yeah. the wholesome thing. Um, it's, a, it's a Nietzschean thought, where sort of Nietzsche has this ideal. Nietzsche has this ideal of, like, saying yes to everything in your environment, and your only negation to kind of look away and uh, there's something in depravity that i can't quite describe right now but it's very like uh it's like trying to engage with and like a grapple with the void or like grapple with the apparent sanctity of objects right or you're like does it does it mean anything that this object is held to be sacred or that this like event is held to be sacred it's like what happens if you make a 9-11 joke mm. And you make it, and like nothing happens, nothing of significance. Well, in general, um, 
yeah, like the question of sanctity, I, I do think is, actually, is kind of culturally important. But then, like, Nietzsche's ideal is, is like, what if you just say yes to everything and your only response to things you don't like is to, to look away? Sort of like rather than staring into the void, so to speak. Um, it makes me think of Eigen Robot talking about how he just, like, likes, you know, you'll, you'll see Eigen Robot tweet occasionally about running out of likes. Uh -huh. I don't know how that's possible, but I think it is, in fact, a very Nietzschean attitude of like you're saying say, saying yes to the saying yes to the positives as well. Yeah, well, it's like setting up your environment so you feel like universal, like positive regard. It's like is is your timeline like sucking you into a like negative mental state constantly, right? Or have you have you tailored it enough that when you go to your timeline, it's just like wholesome and good and you're just like yes 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 like this is what i want to be seen right uh blunderbuss said he was improperly taught and i took poli sci he was held up next to huntington is wrong and everyone got to gloat at our better understanding of political theory than the establishment figure that's because they taught the argument of fukuyama incorrectly uh i haven't finished the comment but this also happened to me when i took a couple poli sci classes in college um they have their their figures that they like to dunk on and it's like usually pretty damn unfair um uh, they set it up as totally unqualified by specific instances rather than accepting the elements of the theory were important and applicable beyond the specifics it was written to address at the time of publication yeah no that, that just doesn't surprise me at all that doesn't surprise so, me so Beckman has this question about yeah why would you say yes to everything instead of maximizing the quality of your consumption no the the idea is the idea is is that if you have maximized the quality of your consumption if you're capable of like pivoting away from badness, then you're in a position where you where you say yes to everything. So it's like if if you're constantly sucked into trying to negate someone, then like maybe something's going wrong. Maybe you have a more fundamental problem than like you know like the fact that X group of people is bad or whatever. Um, you ha you have a problem with like what you're forced to engage with. Um, saying i'm not sure what you mean by, by saying it's like you know it's like saying yes to encounter like it's good you are affirming the goodness of your encounter with something um yeah the um it's not like you know someone's like uh they, they like make some proposition and they're like you know the essence of the mind is that it comports itself to being and like nietzsche is saying that you have to immediately be like yes but more like you know you're like fascinating or like something like that we, we we do have to get you making some nietzsche content it, it'll happen i think <laughs> i think the first thing that i want to do that i should get off of my ass and just do yeah. is i want to do like a poetry reading thing on like sundays and just like invite yeah. a bunch of people and yeah do I'll, that I'll, I'll do that guys poetry yeah. reading on sundays I, I have a I have a book group thing. I have my my great founder theory group actually. That right in the morning, but there's some time slot I would make it. In. Yeah, you should let me know what the time is, and then we'll make them not overlap, and Sweet. we'll have a new a new cultural event. Yeah. And with that, uh, I should, should hop log out. off, and someone else should call in because it's a good experience. You should get your thoughts out there. Um, yeah. Lithros has has thoughts and seems like a cool guy. Um, Blunder. What blunder busted another Asheville uh, Twitter account should also hop on the hop on the mic. Nope. Challenge you guys to get in here. We need the content. Good right. to see you, Doug. See ya. I missed some comments. I feel like, dude, that Mussolini C poster. If if anyone doesn't know what um, WTMMP is talking about, it is a wacky thing to look at because it was real. <laughs> Oh man, I just went underwater. That was awesome. Let's do that again. Oh, that's awesome. It's real. Um, I could. I'll. I'll throw it in the chat later if. If, if I don't forget. Luthros, dude, totally. Come on in. Come on in. All right, dope. We got Luthros. Getting dragon dropped into the on air. Yo. 
Hello, hello. Hey, man, you're you're on air. Let me uh, increase your volume just a little bit to uh, actually. I can do that over here. All right, sweet. Talk to me, All man. Right. How's it going? Well, it's going well. Thank you for having me. Uh, you know, I've got a little whiskey in me, and I'm feeling pretty good. Nice. <laughs> I figured I would need something in order to uh, fly the plane when it came time. Right. So you really don't want to fly a plane without any influences. That's the standard. Uh, that's the standard. That's our line here. That's that's our kind of. That's our Klausowitz. Is is probably said <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, we can look that up later. Yeah. Uh, so I, I do actually do have something to discuss that I'm curious about, which is related to something I saw on Twitter by some random person talking about the idea of, um, the, you know, the, the overall utility of pursuing money as a goal. Yeah. That might sound familiar. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> I've it, been it thinking about that. with me, um, because, you know, a long time ago, even back as far as I was thinking about what kind of major to choose when I was uh going to go to college and my friends were all looking at uh engineering paths yep and you know i was interested in science and i thought engineering and computer science etc were cool but it just felt like you know if you were gonna be one of the big reasons they were saying it was a better choice was because you'll actually make money as opposed to anything else uh, and, you know, business obviously is the big exception, which I never even considered because mm. it seemed to me business, the only goal is money. At least, you know, with engineering, you have some, some pretense of scientific progress you could at least hope for. Um, right. And so with business not even on the table, it came down between, for me, between, you know, engineering or something more, not necessarily artsy. Uh, I mean, I mm. do consider myself an artist in several regards, but I, I realized that was going to be an uncomfortable life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Unless I was really ready to hustle. Yes. So, you know, something in the softer sciences. Um, and that kind of drove my entire career prog progress, uh, where having money as a goal just felt wrong to me. Mm -hmm. And even when I, so I, I split the difference and I majored in political science. Right. And then at the, at the end of college, I was like, well, crap, I can't do anything with this. So <laughs> I, I went to law school. And then in law school, everyone is lining up to take the corporate law classes because right. the big law is where it's at. Right. But I was like, no, no, I don't believe in this money stuff. That's right. ridiculous. That's that's selling your soul. Right. So uh, I, I did not get a legal job out of law school because I didn't have the, you know, experiences outside of the criminal law classes that I focused on. And there were so few of those jobs. And I, I landed on my feet. I, I got an IT job and I've been doing great with that. Now I teach law, so it's all good. Yeah. But since then... I've had a complete turnaround about this idea of money as a pursuit. Right. And I think a big part of that was I had this materialist view of what you can do with money before, and it was leaving out the experiential side of things. Yeah. Uh, and, what do you mean by the experiential side? You know, I, you, you think about money in popular culture and how it's put forth, and the, the most visible sign of money is the status that accrues from very expensive things that you have. Right. And yes, sometimes people go on fancy trips and they like to talk a lot about the fancy trips that they go sure. on because that's another way of earning status from your money. Right. So if your main exposure to what people can do with a lot of money is things like that, just mm. because you're not going to look and find other ways people can do really valuable and enriching things with money, you're just kind of passively taking in what people are talking about the value of money for you, yeah you get this twisted idea that money is only good for boosting your own status right or if not boosting your own status then having fun in ways that may be just marginal improvements over other forms of having fun you know the right. diminishing returns to what a fancy tv can get you as you spend more money are, are precipitous <laughs> right right so so then wait so then what was your new perspective on it or well, you... like I said, it's the experiential side of things is what I was missing because yeah, uh, as I've had more opportunities to do international travel, for example, right, and I have gone to different countries and experienced things, even when it wasn't necessarily a great experience. Right. <laughs> like I spent uh, two weeks in China, and most of the time I was there was pretty crappy. Granted, mm -hmm. it was in August, so it was really miserably hot. Right. But I, I, it, we could talk about China at some point. 
Excellent. Yeah. yeah, I'd be happy to. So, um, that said, even though it was not super fun being there, it was still really enriching being there. Like, mm -hmm. I took a lot away from that experience, mm -hmm. and I thought it was really valuable to have gone there, even though if you ask me, do you want to go back? I'm like, nope. Right. I'm good. Right, right. Um, and those kinds of things are not really easily attainable without money, you know? Now, in my case, work sent me for that. That was a work trip. So right. that was a really unique situation. But if I hadn't been able to go for work, that experience would be barred to me without money. Right. And and it it gave me perspective on the country of China. And I mean, one part of the country, I saw two parts of the country, right? I, yeah. China's huge. You can't say I understand China for because sure. I've been to two places in no, China. Sure. But at least I understood the relationship that these two places in China, Shanghai and Beijing, have with the, you know, overall Chinese government. Uh -huh. And uh, I understood how foreign business people feel about doing business in China. So I gained these perspectives that I could have read in a book. Right. Uh, but they wouldn't have been real in the same way for me. And coming away from those things made me be like, okay, so you don't need money to read something in a book, but turns out you do need money to make it real, to uh -huh. have it become an experiential part of your life like that, where it relates to foreign countries, for example. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I uh, It's interesting because when I actually went to... Um, oh, I just ran my boat. I just had to run my boat into that helicopter. Um when I went to China, um, I was in college and it was between, you know, it was a summer thing. And I actually, a, a whole big part of my thing was trying to reason out, like, what is the way to do this that is, like, really cheap, basically. And I, I basically, I think it can be done, but the cost is, like, convenience. You know what I mean? There's just major, major cost of convenience. The... The thing I'm remembering is I um, I was trying to get the cheapest train ticket. Mm -hmm. And so I go to the machine, you know, to buy a train ticket. And I think I was traveling between Beijing and Shanghai. And it's like a 10 or 8 hour um, yeah. train ride. And I go to the machine and I speak a little bit of Chinese. I'm not like close to fluent. And there's different seats and, you know, whatever. The one we can sleep in and all this stuff. There's yeah. one that says, Wu Wei. Or sorry, yeah, yeah, Wu Wei. No seat. Okay, but it costs money. So I'm thinking to myself, that's the stupidest thing. Of course, they're giving me a seat. I'm just going to get the cheap one, right? There must be some issue, <laughs> right? So I get in, we go, we leave. I think I was, now that I'm remembering, we're, we were leaving Shanghai because we stopped in Shenzhen. And we're, we're going, and some guy comes in, and he shows me his ticket. He wants to sit in my seat. I get up, I look around, there's no seats for me. I realize that I literally bought a thing where it's just like standing room only basically and i Eight spent hours of standing yeah well i just sat down i just like sat and like you know they had um they happened to be playing a jet lee movie on the little tv you know in the cabin i just sat on the floor by a guy with like a paper bag and booze for like eight hours um but if you were in india you would have been sitting on the roof of the train so is that a thing <laughs> Uh, I mean, I haven't been to India, so I have only seen videos of this, but apparently, you know, you get your standing room in the train and then you get your steerage on top of the train and right. plenty of people hang out up there. Holy shit. I've seen um, a lot of videos of that. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know that much about trains in general, but the, I've seen some really weird videos because I'm a degenerate and right. <laughs> uh, I only post wholesome things, but the things I've seen, these eyes, they've been around. Yeah. <laughs> You're, you're a freak like me, dot JPEG. Um, <laughs> the, uh, but I'm thinking about, I'm kind of thinking about your topic with, with the money thing. I struggle with this because, I mean, the, the, really the thing that I struggle with, it's like, there's two sides of it that I commonly think about. One of them is goodness versus power. And, you know, you have this view, this common view that power corrupts, Right. Um, and I think we kind of, as a society, don't just say that. I think we also kind of have the intuition a lot of the time that power corrupts and, and things of that sort. That's one. Um, and at the same time, like you wouldn't necessarily want to see all good things deprived of power, right? Like the images you have of like heroes, right? They have powers, they have abilities, they can, you know, like, uh, isn't it Superman? Like I think in some of the Superman stuff, Superman is like anguishing about like how much power he has and he can never release it all because of the risk would be too great. It's sort of the 
some of like the lore they try what to put a in. Nerd. There. Right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> loser. Um <laughs> Superman is kind of a loser, but like he's an awesome loser. Um the other one I think about is uh something like what do they call it where in Soviet Russia people would um fake the you know fake the like they would only make left shoes in order to get the number up what do they call oh yeah i've heard about this i read a really interesting essay about it that i can't remember the something's details law. about this is some law all the um all the you know negative incentives that occur when you have such a ridiculous bureaucracy and a right. central economy and no way to really have any accountability good harding it, it just can't be it's good harding um, good heart's good law. Heart's law. Okay. It's, 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 I think the statement of the thing is a law. I don't oh, know whether it's like that's a law. it. It's uh, you know, when a measure becomes uh, the, the optimization the target, target, it ceases to be a good measure. Right, right, right. And that's what I think about with money, where there's just all these thing, good things you can do with money, like you know what I mean, like for, you just like for your family, just for for the world and stuff. And then at the same time, it does seem to have this sort of distorting, or can have this distorting effect um, on. You know, you maybe spend your whole life chasing money, and then you're like, "What was it for?" So, those are the things that I think about that I kind of am trying to have good answers to, and I feel like I'm kind of puzzling them together. But those are the kind of topics. Yeah, Wandre has an interesting question: How much would you give up in terms of enjoyment, pleasure, fulfillment from your career to make more money? And I've actually thought about this extensively. Yeah. So, like I said, I work in IT, but I work at a university, and mm. the university life for staff is very relaxed compared to the private sector um and like we get all sorts of time off i get like five weeks paid leave every year and mm. uh for my upcoming parental leave i'm gonna get eight weeks paid leave that has nothing to do with the rest of my leave so it doesn't use any of my sick leave doesn't use any of my vacation time they're just going to pay me to be home with my baby for eight weeks yeah which is amazing like these right. are the kinds of benefits you can only get working in that kind of situation mm -hmm. so that said what i yeah thank you europeans i know you're doing much better than us in that regard for, for <laughs> the united states this is absolutely incredible right um so that has been awesome i love the benefits where i work but i realize if i were to move into the private sector not only would i get more money at the job i'm at there would also be opportunities for promotion which really do not exist in the university setting for certain types of work right so like uh, my college doesn't have more than one IT person mm -hmm. and the university has a big IT group, but they're not really in, in the same promotion line as me. So like, there's nowhere for me to go up where I am, but there's a lot of fulfillment where I work and I have lots of friends in the faculty and staff. I have the chance to teach mm. overall. I could probably double or triple my salary if I took my skill set into a company. Right. Um, I right. would be losing a lot of free time and I would be trading away that comfort and stability for something that challenges me a lot more uh, over time as right. I inevitably am promoted and have more and more difficult tasks to deal with until I reach the level where I can just basically stop working and retire on a giant pile of money right <laughs> i am coming up on my 10th year in this job right. and like it's it's comfortable it leaves me lots of time to pursue my other hobbies i'm at the point where i'm trying to convert some of these hobbies into income streams now mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. i still I have, i'm about to have my second kid like i would like to have more money for my family right um but i have a reasonably comfortable life as it is so it's not like i'm dying here like yeah. i have no trouble paying my debts i'm totally good i bought a house so right. is it is it more like with with the the income from hobbies is it more like you would like to do those hobbies more i mean if like if you ask me what's my dream job it's right. probably writer you know yeah like a, a novelist or short story author cool um but i can't say that my my the time i commit to those things is really consistent with that as an honest dream right, like, right. i put a fair amount of time into writing right but i'm not busting my butt trying to actually take get that off the ground again yeah. because my i don't hate my job right like, if i hated my job i'd probably feel very differently but it's it's just le left me in this weird liminal space where like mm -hmm. i always mm -hmm. know that i could be making a lot more money and i mm -hmm. probably wouldn't hate those jobs either right but I 
I just don't have that fire under me because things are so good right now. Right. And maybe it could be better, but it's hard for me to see how much money could help, especially because even though in the context of like international travel, more money could help me do more of that. Yes. But right. I'm about to have a baby and I'm not going anywhere for a little while. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, I mean, you know, you know, philosophers on Twitch playing Flight Simulator. It's like, what? What is that? What is that like? Question that you know, arguably starts. Someone could, is probably going to call me out on that. It was better like history of philosophy knowledge than me. But that question that arguably starts philosophy is like, what? What is the good life? You know, um, and you know, it's just super real. It's like kind of balancing all these factors against each other, and like, how do you? choose how you want to live you know i mean I, at least as a practical thing like sort of further away from some of the like general moral framings that i use for thinking about it is um it's just like know what you're going to use it for basically is my kind of plan for myself anyway um so you don't just like go for the dopamine or you know go for the social status go for the the sort of like if, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you, you just need to have a goal and feel like it's a good goal. And then there's not really any wrong answers as far as I can tell. Um, at least none that you won't be able to convincingly argue your way out of. I think right. <laughs> but that, that's really what matters. You know, the, no, it's the um, I think if it's truly a goal, that's part that's what it is for me. If it's truly your goal. Right. So I have a friend and I used to work on business ideas with this dude. And this dude just wants to make money. <laughs> like, and he, since he was a kid, he was just like selling stuff, you know, everything he basically he ever did. It just, he loves the process. He loves building the system. He loves like think about entrepreneurial ideas. And at this point he already exited something and did pretty well for himself. And there's a level of just like, that's what he loves. Right. So for him, it's both the passion and it happens to be that he picked a convenient passion, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, convenient in some ways but also very hard but like convenient in terms of like you know getting compared to like if your thing is like watercolors it's like i mean I, I don't know how hard it is to get money for art but you know it seems hard anyway they um, say it's very hard and i don't have the experience to doubt them right yeah wtmm wtmmp we're gonna have to think of another name for you because i can't say all those vo those uh, is W a vowel? I can't say all those sounds that quickly. W. <laughs> w. Um, yeah, no. I, 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 th the reason I say I'm not sure is because I think it's sometimes possible to hack these systems a little more than people think. Um, it's like, there's a lot of jobs where it's just very hard to get them if you apply through the normal channels, but then if you know the right dude, it's just, you can get it. So that, that's one of those things where I wonder for art. Is there like a, what is the super advanced approach to selling art? I don't even know. But that's why I say that I'm not sure. I feel sure. like that's largely a social game. Like you said, it's knowing the right people, yeah. getting into the right communities, and having the right connections, which goes for any job, really. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a believer. I'm a believer in that. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, so wait, so you just got... You just got Flight Simulator. I have Flight Simulator. I didn't just get it. I've been playing it since right. it came out, but I just reinstalled it in the hopes of, uh, you know, taking to the skies yeah, dude. as your wingman. Well, well, one of these days, let's let's do it. Maybe even after the thing, we're, we'll see if you're still chilling. Um, sure. Let's totally do it. The uh, I'm now remembering that you were telling me what buttons to press in order to, like, recharge my plane or something one of these nights oh yeah i've been at your side this whole time you're <laughs> yeah, guiding yeah. moonlight <laughs> thanks dude thanks i appreciate it. i do appreciate it um do you know about planes and stuff like do you I, like yeah so i uh recently started learning a lot more about planes uh -huh. um not from microsoft flight simulator but from dcs okay. world which is like the the world premiere um realistic military combat flight simulator and that one is actually free for the base game on steam so you can just download it and try it out i don't think it would be very good for your show uh -huh. but the the trick about that game is that like every plane is modeled down to the most minute obnoxious detail so like when my friend and i 
get a plane and most of the planes you have to pay for. So right. when we buy a plane, uh, the first thing we do is pull out the manual and learn how to start it, uh -huh. which can be like a 45 minute process to even get it working. Oh, holy shit. Um, now, a lot of people hear that and they're like, what's wrong with you? Well, there's a lot wrong with me. <laughs> yeah, what's wrong uh, with you? <laughs> but, it, you know, it comes from an appreciation for the complexity of the technology. Right. And the skill and uh, commitment of the people who make it and operate it. Right. Uh, and, and being able to share in that is a really cool experience. And so from from there, I've been playing that a lot, learning to fly things like the F-15, in uh, I'm just starting to learn the F-18. I'm learning a Russian combat helicopter, the Ka-50, which has been taken out of service, but is still really crazy to fly. Right. And I'll, to play the game well, you have to actually understand a lot of principles of flight. What is this and game called? DCS. So it's like Digital Combat Simulator, I think. But just DCS. If you look that up on Steam, you'll find it. Right. Uh, the base planes are not very fun to fly. There's like a trainer plane and a terrible Cold War Russian, well, Soviet bomber, right. basically. Um, so if you want anything more fun than that, you have to pay for it, and they're not cheap. Like the F-14 Tomcat was $80. Right. Um, but then you get to play Top Gun, so right. there's, there's a lot to that. Uh, it's a really cool plane to fly. So anyway, since I've started playing that, I've had to learn so much about flight dynamics and everything. Um, that goes into keeping a plane up in the air and dogfighting, and right, it's, right. it's been an exciting journey. By the way, Lee um, I'm realizing that Thinkware just just oh, showed yes. up. I see that. I've been talking too much. <laughs> no, 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 no. I well, asked you. Th thanks for coming on, dude. Anytime. I'll yeah. be here for the rest of the show. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, have fun. Hey, Thinkware. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're you're on Philosophers on Twitch playing Flight Simulator. How's it going, man? I'm doing okay. Yeah. Huh. Let me, uh, I, I'm realizing, so I'm still in Grand Theft Auto, so I'm going to switch over to actual flight simulator um, momentarily. But hold on, let, let me do my, let me do my, my opener. Um, all right, sweet. No, we got you on. Good to have you. Um, think where my plan was to, as soon as you showed up, was to blitz you with 10 questions that okay. I have not prepared in advance. And I was okay. just going to think of them. All right. Just to get the ball rolling. Um, all right, here we go. Think work. What is your favorite color? Uh, I would say a dark blue. Dark blue. What is a place in the world that you want to visit? Florence. Oh, Florence. Were you a, what, what's like a toy you used growing up? Like, uh, for me, I'm thinking of like, I feel like there were truck kids and dinosaur kids, but I don't know if it, that was different in, in your day. So w what's something... What type of kid uh, were you? I was a dinosaur kid. I, I was also uh, a kid who loved rocks. I collect a lot of rocks and would bang and break up the rocks and uh, find little treasures inside and things I thought were, were special. It's a di um, dinosaur kid and a rock kid. Yeah, I didn't have electronics. We didn't have TV. So I also read a lot of books, read a lot of books. Uh-huh. That's a good answer. Hold on. Uh, no, I'm interested in that. No, wait. Let's keep going. What was that? Three questions? Um, oh, yeah. We got one comment that you're a bit quiet. Let me see if I can screw with that on my side. And if you have a way of screwing with that on your side, that would be cool. I'm not sure if you do, though. Okay. Um, I'm on speaker. Let me see if I get off speaker. Uh, let's see. Is that better or worse? Or this is. Same. I think this is better. Okay. Yeah, I think Does we're that good. Does that sound better? Does that sound better, chat? How is this? Does my voice come through better? Yeah, I think you're. I think you're pretty good. I'm okay. Me messing with the dials over here to make sure we get it right. Sweet. Um. Sorry, I'm a little bit disorganized. Now let's open up Flight Simulator. Excellent. Um. All right. More questions. Do you have a favorite? An oh, spirit animal. That's four. Oh, spirit animal. Yeah. Um, I, th I think who is it that was Eigen was asking that question earlier, and I, I kind of put down somewhat jokingly the Bigfoot. Uh -huh. uh, but that's prob probably not a bad answer. Probably a uh, Bigfoot as the, the cryptid uh, is probably a good spirit animal. Nice. Um, how do you ha how do you drink your coffee, if at all? I drink espresso straight, four shots of espresso, and usually take two of those a day. 
four shots of espresso. Tw- yeah, so it's a, it's a lot. Tw- of twice a day. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. The uh, oh god, sorry, everybody. I'm just gonna actually fix my um, stream setup and focus on that briefly so that I can ask, ask these questions in a good way. Window capture. You guys can see my whole. All the secrets revealed. All the secrets revealed. This is this is what it what it's like in the this is like the back room. What is this? I don't even know how that got on there. Cool. We got you. We got me. Almost ready. Move. There we go. Okay. And my music on my side turned into organs, so I'm going to change that back into jazz because the organs are weird. Okay. Um, do you have a favorite type of music? Oh, I think I listen to a lot of, of, of dad rock mostly. Uh, 90s, uh-huh. indies, and 60s greatest hits. Um, some classical music. I've uh, been listening to a lot of magnetic fields lately. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, I used to really like the mag- magnetic fields. Um, and then what happened? What's that? You used to listen to them. What happened? You know, what happened? I think I listened to some of their sad songs when I was like in high school and like sad about girls. Okay. And then I just got less sad about girls. <laughs> I think that's what happened. Uh-huh. Um, um, yeah, I just started listening to the 69 love songs and uh-huh. kind of went from there. I, I mean, they were, they were new to me uh, just a couple of weeks ago and I've just been digging in deep. It's, it's in such the, a cool, work. it's such a cool object. It's like such a cool entity. You know, what, what is it like? Probably they released that on multiple CDs or something. Yeah, 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 and and it's nice on Spotify that you can listen to the whole thing, uh-huh. and then I've been kind of creating a playlist of, of what I actually like and the ones that are just kind of you know okay, all right, that was an experiment, right? And so yeah, I keep the songs that I really like to listen to over and over and over again. Sweet, um, really quick before I continue with my with, with my blitz, which is slowed down. Where should we fly today? Anywhere in the world? Oh, um. Lisbon. Lisbon. Let's do it. I find Lisbon. Every time this happens, it tests my geographical knowledge because sometimes I scroll to the wrong place. Um, yeah, you're, you're getting close there. Yeah. <laughs> Lisbon Airport. And uh, where should we go to? We, from, va- from Lisbon. Let's go to Porto. Porto, Portugal. All right. Uh... Is that no? That seems like the wrong one. Porto, Portugal. Oh, Lisbon Airport in America. Oh, so, yeah, so. oh no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. No wait, Lisbon Airport in America. What is that? <laughs> it's like uh, Cairo, uh, Illinois. <laughs> um, Does anybody in here know where the LPPT... Thank you. Thank you, Lithros. LPPT. Yeah, Lisbon, Lisbon. Okay, there we go. There we go. Please, Boa. LPPT. Nice. All right, cool. And do you have a preference on a plane? You'll you'll see them moment... Or, or, or a plane type. I'll scroll through them slowly, though you're going to have a little bit of delay. So if anything catches your eye, um, we have various types of jets little ones with um you know kind of weird little weird looking ones there's a 747 and then there's a fighter jet those are the yeah, notable let's, let's go back to that robin let's see the robins uh robin. i think there was like a yellow one and a blue one yes oh there yeah there's a blue robin here and there was oh there's the red one okay yeah let's do the blue one all right i don't know if i've even flown this one before Hopefully it won't be a disaster. Okay, cool. Um, okay, back to my question list. I think I'm gonna say that was like five. Um, is there a nonfiction book that you like? Nonfiction book that I like. I'm trying to think of 
Um, I'm a big fan of um, uh, Charles Mann's 1491 and 1493, which uh, is sort of... Uh, what the world of the Americas looked like before and post colonial influence. Uh, and those are, those are both books that I tout um, quite frequently when I get a chance to. A really fascinating looks at what the Americas were like uh -huh. um, before before the uh, um, European contact. You know what uh, might interest you is um, looking for it on my shelf. There it is. Um, along those lines is the conquest of New Spain. I don't know if you've heard of this one. Okay. Um, it's by Bernal Diaz, which is the name of a guy who was with Cortez when the oh, Spanish go yeah. to Mexico. Yeah. There's a great podcast. Um, oh, no, I'm trying to think of the, the exact name of it, but it's a, it's about lost and destroyed civilizations. Uh huh. And he goes over. Uh, I'm listening to one about the Incas right now, but he's also had one on the Aztecs. Yeah. And just just how those places imploded uh, once the contact happened. Right. Yeah, the um, I'm, I'm going to try to figure out how to get this plane off the ground. There we go. Okay. Got a little bit of motion here. Come um, on, little Robin. Yeah. But you can look inside of it, too, by the way. Okay. Which is kind of cool. Oh, yeah. You can see all the little, like, dials and stuff. Yeah. Um, oh. Oh, oh, wait. I paused by accident. Oh, oh, it. There we go. Up. Oh, All right, okay. we're, we're, we're we up. Go. There we go. We're up. Oh man, this is a wobbly little plane. Wow. So I don't know much about planes, and I'm kind of bad at the game, but um, I've played it for like seventy hours because of the show, so yeah. I get by. Okay. So I just need 10,000 hours to be... Uh, oh, right? oh, okay. All right, all right. I just crashed. Um, let's try this again. I think I haven't broken the thing. It seems like a very think work plane. Says... Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, wobbly and prone to crashing. <laughs> What's up, John? Oh yeah. By the way, so so think we do have the chat here. I don't know if you. We, yeah, we can I, see I'm it. I'm in the chat. Uh, oh no. Kind of seems like. Uh, oh no. Listening. There we go. We're gonna try this again. What's up? It's crispy time. All right. Four more questions, I think. Um, favorite mythological character. Oh, hmm. that's a good one. Um, Hercules is the one that comes to mind. Um, uh, I maybe I'll probably go with Prometheus. I think Prometheus is is so uh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, the 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 sacrifices and the penalty and what he paid for it. Um, yeah, I think I'll go with Prometheus. Prometheus. Yeah, that's a good answer. Bring fire to mankind. A lot of people don't know about the the one where he um, with the bags of meat. Uh, oh, remind me of that one. It's basically, uh, at least in the thing I read as a kid. So I had my parents got me this very good comic book version of the myths, and uh -huh. I had one for the myths, and I had one for um, what do you call it, King Arthur? You know, Round Table, like that set of uh -huh. stories, and. Anyway, this is before the whole stealing fire thing that, and they're kind of using it to show that Prometheus is like a trickster. And it's uh. that he brings two bags of meat to Zeus. And one of them is all like guts and stuff, but on top it looks like good meat. And on the other one, it's all good meat, but on the top it looks like guts and like bad parts that, you know, undesirable parts of the animal. And Zeus picks the wrong one. And then gets really mad. So they also kind of use this to show that, like, the gods aren't totally omniscient. Okay, yeah. I thought it was to show that Prometheus is not totally a good guy either. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'd yeah. be mad too, you know. Um, all right, cool. I, I think we'll have a little bit better luck here with... I'm going to yeah, try to get some altitude. Yeah, wobbly, yeah. We're, we're up and aloft, yeah. This is... Uh, you know what it is? It's the wind. The wind just hits this thing. 
Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so I turned off the disaster. Porto's the other way. Thank you. Thanks, John. Oh man. <laughs> I'm going to try one more thing that I might have to switch the plane just because I don't know how to. Uh, it's all right. That's all right. Yeah. Um, here we go. Slew mode. And I can cheat. <laughs> there we go. There's my altitude. Let's see if I can Let's see if I can make it work from here. And if not, we're, we're switching planes. Um, all right. So we have three more questions. What else do I have for you? Last time you pulled an all-nighter. Well, I am a parent of twins, and uh, we had lots of sleepless nights when the girls were first born. Um, they were also uh, uh, preemie. Uh, they, were, they were born at about 25 weeks, which if you know anything about babies is terribly, terribly small. Yeah. And we had a, a lot of sleepless nights in the NICU. Uh, but that's probably been a good four years now that that girls weren't in good health. And so glad uh, to hear that, you know, I'm, I'm a dad and I got my routine, so right. I'm not pulling the all nighters very <laughs> often unless some, one of the girls is sick or something. Right. Uh, it doesn't happen. Right. Got it. Got it. All right. One more question before okay. we can just, uh, okay, here's the question, which is do to what extent do your family and, and people in your life, you know, in your in your real life, um, uh, know about your Twitter? Um, my my kids and my uh, wife certainly do. Yeah, I mean, I think I've told my parents and brothers and extended family, and they don't care. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. But uh, like people I work with and my students, no, I don't. Right. They don't really know about it. Uh, they don't care about it. <laughs> I don't think they, they're, they're really cognizant of it. So, yeah, it really is just my immediate circle that, that knows about the, the yeah. Twitter account. Yep, yep. Cool. All right. Well, that, that was my experiment. I haven't done the question blitz before, and I hit a couple stumbling blocks with crashing the plane and having to switch games and, and everything, but I, I think it went pretty well. Um, the uh, So I guess n now that you're here... Um, we did have some questions from on Twitter. Okay. And um, uh, before the end, hopefully we'll get a couple people to call in that they might want to ask you stuff directly. And okay. I, I think I just kind of want to know a little bit like about you and your like, what is think word, I guess. Okay, here's a question for you. Like, like, how did you come to the current thing that you do oh that's a good question um so uh for many years the think word account was really one i just used to follow people that i thought were interesting hence think word and i i really never spoke i never talked i never said anything never tweeted mm. but uh, around january of last year so i'm i've only got you know 40 people i've picked up over the years as far as followers and me because I never tweet. Mm. So I thought, well, I'm just going to try different stuff. So for uh, two months straight, I posted a fact about William Blake every day. Uh huh. So no jokes, uh, just a fact about William Blake, the poet. Uh, I've done my, some of my dissertation work in, in Blake, and I was teaching a class in Blake. So that's kind of where I started. Uh huh. And then I kind of ran out, <laughs> ran out of Blake facts. To post and so i switched I just i tried lots of different things uh you know just the standard little jokes of, with words and they didn't seem to go anywhere i tried a lot of jokes with emoticons and they didn't seem to go anywhere and then uh, i experimented with kind of a a joke about twitter and fantasy fairy tale photo uh -huh. uh, picture rather and that did well that en en engaged and so I just kind of experimented over and over and over again with these kind of fairy tale, whimsical images and jokes combined. And that seemed to be the formula that worked for me. So it, it really was kind of a trial and error over several days, weeks, months. I think it was really probably March or April of last year before I really kind of hit my stride. Yeah. 
uh, on on those that kind of joke. And then I had the, the, the games as well, the Twitter games. So basically, okay, yeah, that's interesting. Um, okay, since I have you here and I am interested in this, uh, if somebody describes something as Blakeian, what do they mean by that? Obviously, they mean having to do with William Blake, but what what, is, right. what so, does that mean? Um, Blake is very um, prophetic, kind of spiritual, a little bit mystical. Uh, so if someone says something as Blakeian, that tends, what I, tends to be what I would think. Blake is also very interested in the poor and in children. Uh -huh. Had a lot of very simple verse. And so that I would think of also as Blakeian as being interested in, in the poor and the childlike. But I, I would, if someone said, oh, that's very Blakey, and I would assume they meant something of the visionary, mm. um, poetic kind of uh, voice. Uh, he had some kind of a, a bit of a sensibility of, a, of a being a prophet speaking to a corrupt world. And that's a lot of, of what I think comes through in later poets who try to kind of copy and emulate what Blake did. Huh. That's Okay, that's useful just for me personally, because um, I'm always kind of... Right now, I'm, I'm actually trying to get through Paradise Lost. Um, okay. And uh, I have the audio book. And okay. um, that's a whole experience, too. Just, yeah. Yeah. you know, hearing it on audio. I listened to um, the Iliad on audiobook. And I actually was listening to the Iliad while I was on a rowing machine. I would, like, exercise and listen to the okay. Iliad. Get really pumped up. <laughs> um, yeah. And But part of it was, you know, the whole oral tradition thing. And so then I ended up on... On Milton, which is, of course, you know, epic. yeah, yeah, and and like his language is just like, yeah. is uh, I don't you know I don't even have the words, and so anyway, it kind of got me thinking more about and more about poetry and like what that's for. Um, yeah, Par Paradise Lost is is terrific, and it, it's amazing how really accessible it is, at least in my opinion, for a piece written in the late 1600s, mm -hmm. and just how powerful it is. But speaking of Blake, Blake was a huge Milton fan. In fact, he wrote a poem called Milton, in which he, uh, it's basically fan fiction, in uh -huh. which Milton comes to visit him and talk to him, and it's all about, he just adored Milton. That's and, amazing. Uh, talked about it, uh, about wanting to meet his hero. He's, he was one of his heroes. Oh, that's amazing. That's super cool. Um, okay, yeah, so I, I just got sidetracked by the whole by the whole Blake and poetry thing, so I'm, I'm interested in it. But the... Um, uh, back on the Twitter account. So, okay. So it sounds like you were kind of, basically you were, you, you were a lurker. I mean, and then yeah. you were like, I guess w what made you think that it would be fun to get followers? Like what, what, what clicked? Was it just like, well, you know, I could um, do this or, or what? I, I interacted with, with I can robot a few times back when I literally was never tweeting, mm -hmm. but I would reply to people. And he started following me for some reason. And I was like, I don't know why this account that's this big is following me when I never tweet. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if he's following me, maybe maybe I can tweet. Maybe I'll do something. Right. So it was sort of just that kind of experimental uh, idea of let's try something. Let's try something and see what happens. And um, it kind of worked. Sweet. Oh, okay. Yeah, this, I like that as backstory. Um, the... Uh... Yeah, that's interesting. So something about that just kind of was like, probably Eigen Robot has taste in tweets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, I, I mean, I'm not the only person that has that kind of story. I know a lot of other accounts were like, oh, for some reason, Eigen started following me, uh -huh. and then uh, they, they started tweeting. It's interesting too because I, I, I've been on Twitter for about like I don't know, fourteen, fifteen months, and just gone through all these stages with it, you know. Um, and it, 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 it's super true that at the, those early moments where you're like, am I even doing this? Whatever. A little bit of like positive attention from right. a big account from someone you think is cool is, is, is meaningful, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, so I guess here's another question then. So I get, I, I would, I, I don't know what the question is. But I okay. would be interested in hearing you kind of like riff on, in some ways, like the development of the aesthetic, like, you know, the kind of spirit that's in like a Thinkwork 
tweet, you know, it, like, do you feel like that's always, always been a thing that you, you like, did you always think that way? Does that make sense? Like, were you, were yeah, you, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, I think so. I think, I think it does kind of capture a little bit of, of my spirit. Um, uh, I, I think a lot of it comes down to what, when I was 12, what did I like? What was I fascinated by with at 12? So it's uh, cryptids and old ruins mm -hmm. and uh, fantasy novels and science fiction and all those kind of things that, uh, you know, animals, the things that I really liked when I was 12. And I think it's it's a little bit of that, that same spirit, the 12-year-old boy mm -hmm. uh, spirit that uh, who read way too many books and was out wandering in the hills, walking uh, all around the, I lived out in the country and was walked everywhere, er, everywhere, mm. uh, every day. And that's kind of the spirit that's in there as well. And I, I also, there's a little bit of a kind of a zagging uh, where everyone else is zigging, you know, zigzag. Uh, that I saw so many people would make jokes about current events mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, political Twitter, pol polemic Twitter, having a very strong strident opinions about right. whatever the current news is up to date. So uh, trying to kind of go weave an opposite direction, kind of tacking against that. Uh, I, you know, I kind of talk about whimsy Twitter, and it's it's kind of that that counteraction to that very very serious or kind of sneering, snide, mean uh, the kind of the mean aspect of Twitter. Totally. You know, just just trying to try to pull away from that. Right? There's nothing uh, mean about it. But at the same time, I, I try to avoid being too, I don't know, cuddly cute all the time. Right. Um, there's a, a quote in the Narnia series that are talking about Aslan, and uh, they say he's good, uh, but he's not safe. He's good, but he's not safe. Uh huh. And so I, I think I want to have a little bit of that not safe edge. A little, right. a little spooky, a little scary. Without being, um, uh, I guess, I guess over the line, just just a little bit of things in there that are a little bit darker. Yeah. Sometimes that sometimes cause me to lose some followers. Right. But right. I don't. I don't want to be the too cute and cuddly all the time. Yeah, it's interesting. I I think there's something like if I were to articulate, I, I'm glad you you mentioned that because, you know, because I make these pictures, right? I try to put together. I make these promo images, and I. Often it's from someone I've, I've been following, but like I haven't ever gone deep on like what is their thing, and so I'm I'm trying to. So for example, uh, uh, Chaos Prime came on, um, and I did these promo images that were very, you know, I kind of went for this like, what do you call it, like um, trippy kind of Lovecraftian, like your mind okay. is being bent and broken by the beholding of some evil truths and whatever. And so, but a little bit for me because I, I, I'm pretty interested in like aesthetics and stuff it's a bit of a roll of the dice because i hadn't like gone super deep on his stuff yet and i'm like does this work etc likewise with you i think there's something like i'm glad you pointed out that it's not just the cuddly and cute thing because there are probably a lot of accounts out there there that are you know pictures of children's books period or something like that or just right right right, right? um so I guess yeah, there there is that kind of like wild or or like this the weirdness. There's a there's a weird element, yeah. and there's also yeah. some kind of element of like play. Like I feel like the choose your own adventure thing, uh, right, is is important. Yeah, that's kind of I think that is kind of what I'm trying to get. And, and I, you know, I I try to pick when I pick pictures of animals, I generally tend to use wildlife rather than you know cats. You know, mm. cats is very are very very uh, popular on Twitter. Right. And internet in general. And so, and you now I will occasionally have a cat picture, but I, I tend to use things that are wild, you know, a frog or a bear uh, rather than a cat or a dog. Uh huh. Uh huh. Interesting. Cool. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just thinking about that. Um, and then, can you say some things about the, about the choose your adventure? stuff so i think i've i've only seen two of those have you made a bunch yeah. more or was it just the two there's probably about a dozen um however since like july i've only done three uh-huh um 
and part of another thing is they're a victim of my own ambition because every time I, I make one they get bigger uh-huh. and more sprawling and more exhausting right um, but for a while in, I would say April through May June I had one every week or almost every Wednesday I would have a Twitter game uh-huh. that I would post um and they were uh, a little bit like trying to build a house out of sand, uh-huh. <laughs> a, sand a sand castle. You know, Twitter is not really a medium for building a game, uh-huh. but it was a kind of a challenge and, and um, a lot of planning, a lot of planning. Uh, some of them were around a thousand tweets, all interconnected. Oh, wow. Um, uh, I may be done with them. I don't know. I... Uh, the last one was so much work, and it didn't seem to last much more than a day or two in the Twitter sphere. So uh, right. maybe this summer I'll pick it up again. But it was just one of those things like, what what can you do with Twitter? What is what is something that people aren't doing? Mm-hmm. How do you kind of stretch and build it and bend it in ways that's not supposed to be used? Right. But, uh, you know, you I had the always had the Lego sets, and... I would build it according to the picture in the box. And then I'd be like, okay, that's boring. Right. So then you just, you do something totally different and you use the, the bricks in a way they weren't meant to be built. And right. that's kind of what I was trying to do with the Twitter, the Twitter games, uh, putting them together in ways that weren't, weren't standard. Yeah. Uh, for, for the, for what Twitter is supposed to be. I guess I'm also curious, like, have you with that, are you at, still at a, like, and do you expect to stay at a like, you know, um, let's just keep making this because it's cool? Or do you have some vision beyond that? Like, you know, something no, else? It, it's it's really just because it, it's cool and fun, and I enjoyed it. And I was, I was looking for a new, yeah, new challenge. I think one of the reasons why I'm just a, maybe putting on the back burner now uh-huh. is because with each game I was able to innovate something new. So like, okay, what if I was trying to create a world map using just tweets? Mm. What if I was trying to create inventory for the players with just tweets mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or create like a civilization? How would I create a civilization <laughs> game using just tweets? Right. And I, I you know, I, I and so at, at, by ultimately I've kind of felt like, well, I don't I don't really have that I, a new idea I'm excited about. Right. That I can use to create something. So so I won't say never, but I, I, there, there are probably no plans for any more games in the, the near future. The um, the. Uh, thing this made me think of, and and I can uh, fire this over later if you're interested in in it is um there's this YouTube video called Magnasanti, which is a guy playing Sim City. Have you heard of this? No. So this dude, it's basically like this guy plays Sim City, some older version of Sim City, and he makes these like mega cities that are like, oh. and you really get the sense like the game is not meant to be played this way. Um, and they're like, he, he just has this really epic, terrifying music and he's, he's showing all his calculations. He's got like scribbles and notebooks from like, you know, he's like year four of building, you know, like the predecessor of Magnusanti. And then he just makes these mega cities that are just like extremely efficient, like pretty just you know, if anyone lived there in real life, it would be like hell. Um, yeah. but you know, they're, they're maximizing population per square foot or whatever it is. Um, yeah. anyway, just made me think of that. This kind of like just hacking it. Kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Try, trying to hack, hack what the game is supposed to do and right. finding your new way of doing it. Yeah. Right. I see that. Um, sweet. What, what's next for, for you on in terms of Twitter, like what do you, if if you plan or in that way or, or in, are you re- Sorry, I'm having trouble getting this, these thoughts out. It's like, um, do you have a direction yeah. you're steering towards? Does that make sense? That's that's a good question. The the answer really is is right now no. Yeah. Uh, I I've got kind of my routine and, and I post a lot on the weekdays, just a little bit on the weekends and just keep posting those joke tweets right um and and um questions and things like that right so no right right now it, it kind of is just maintaining that same routine and there's just the the same routine i have every day with uh what i tweet and when and what mm. i retweet and uh just plugging through there so 
uh, I'm not sure what's next. I, I, I think I might try to experiment here and there, and I, I usually do to try to find something new every once in a while, throw it in there, see what people think, and right. then I'll, you know, okay, that didn't really work, pull something out, but right. just a lot of lot of stuff I throw out there. You know, I, I probably write something like 120 tweets a, a week, and then post maybe 80, and then I delete half of them. Uh huh. And uh, start over again the next week. Huh. That, and that pretty much takes all my free time right now. Oh wow! I don't even know what no, what my number is because it, it's very interesting to hear you describe it that way because it's there's like almost like a production line sense yeah. to it. Um, I do this like I feel like I'm having like an emotional interaction with Twitter where I'm like I complain, you know, I do this, I do that. I used to plan stuff out more. I used to plan like, like long threads, but. It's interesting because you're kind of doing a different different thing in a way. Um, yeah, it's very um, almost regimented. Uh, you know, I even have the, that 10 o'clock tweet that I post every night mm, uh, mm-hmm. to say, you know, goodbye. I have an alarm uh, that I wake up every morning at 630 and I start retweeting. And it's just, uh, I, I guess that, that almost sounds like it's uh, confining uh, or a prison, but that's that it's part of I, I like that routine i like that routine of the way I, yeah i do twitter through the day and yeah um it works with my schedule you know i i teach i have office hours but i find time here and there to do 30 seconds on twitter post something and move on to something else right we, we had a couple of questions in the chat um torval asked is there ever going to be a think word archive with some basic curation um not uh, no any plans on it I, I mean there there is the deleted words uh account mm. which is is basically the joke tweets that don't make don't make the cut don't get enough engagement right and it's, it's about half of them uh and i will repost most of the deleted ones in deleted word um sometimes there's a jokes i think i could recycle or reuse uh you know the, oh that's such a great picture but that the punchline didn't work. It didn't land. So I'll, I'll just I'll just throw it back in the pile and, and try to rework it. Um, but the yeah, the leader word is about the closest I I get to any kind of sense of archive about it. So then the ones you delete is that because are you kind of just trying to keep a timeline that is high quality? If that makes sense, like if someone scrolled that, through, that's it. part of it. Um, uh, I want to let the, uh, the the expression I often use is weeding. Mm. You know, if you have two or three or four weak tweets and a strong tweet, then the, they tend to suck a little bit of mm-hmm. the attention away from the good tweet. And because I have so many sitting in the, in the draft tab mm-hmm. that there's really, there's no need to kind of, you know, give this one a second, third, fourth, fifth chance. Right. Just, you know, just, just put it away, put it in the deleted word, slap on the next one. I don't tend to be too sentimental or attached to any particular joke. Yeah. Uh, if I do get attached to a joke, I'll just leave it. Mm. Uh, but that doesn't happen very often. Like I said, there's just so many. Uh, you just you just post and go, and okay, it worked, it didn't work, and then you move on to the next one. Right. Um, really quick, uh, Volk, go go check out Thinkworth's uh, Twitter account. Um, he t- posts cool pictures and stuff. I don't know. I, don't, I didn't pitch it that well. Um, <laughs> the. Uh, Oh, Fool Jeff says, first time I think we're Twitter, I'm having a ball. Oh, that was great. There you go. You got a happy, you got a happy visitor. Happy right, customer. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> um, so, I guess, by the way, I'll put it out there for the, you know, for the viewers. If anybody's thinking about hopping in to ask a question, we could do that pretty soon. Um, I don't know if may, maybe he's going to get a, get a minute out from her uh, lost class again. Um. All right, let me think. How close are we to Porto? We're still we're still flying over Lisbon. Yeah, we're we're uh, area. I should have yeah. looked to see. I don't know if you can see this on the left. Let me make this I bigger. Do. Yeah, I yeah, see yeah. It now. I see it now. Yeah. We got this big line, so it takes a second. I think if I uh-huh. switch to like like a fighter jet or something, we get there a bit faster. Or the seven forty seven. The robot is not very fast, huh? Yeah, no. Not too. There's some. Spe- oh, here we go. Airspeed is like 85 knots. I think it's knots. It's probably knots. 
Okay. But yes, yeah, so, so this game, by the way, I don't know if you know much about it. Um, we're flying over Bing maps. Okay. So this is like what yeah. the world actually looks like. I um, remember there was something kind of viral a few months ago about some place in Australia that had the, the wrong um, coordinates put in. So there was like a building that was 200 feet high, but it really wasn't. It's just the, <laughs> the mistake in the data. Okay. Do you remember this? No, I didn't. mistake in the data that was in the game. And so there's a random town, I think it was Australia, that had a 200 foot tall skyscraper that wasn't there in real life because uh, of some mistake. I don't know if someone in the chat remembers that. Um, a link to that one. But, right. Yeah, that's my main association with this game. Well, were they saying it's like a CIA thing or like, was that the kind of. It was, it was just a, a bureaucratic error. Someone, someone fat fingered a number right. and made a huge building where there wasn't it. Right. Um, Lithra says there's still plenty of things like that. Yeah, that's interesting. Do you have any questions for chat? I guess if you've got a bunch of got a bunch of people here, if you have any anything you'd want to ask a, a group of them that I think mostly are Twitter people. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the, let's see. Uh, I, I see someone saying, what's the story behind the account name? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you, those of you in chat, I want you to look at your fingers, all right? Everybody looking at their fingers, type out W-E-R-T-T-R-E-W, we're true, W-E-R-T, I'm oh, sorry, I spelled it, two T's in the chat, and look at your fingers as you type, and you see that those four keys are next to each other. Mm. Anyway, we're true is the name that I've used since I was a wee lad playing games on my dad's computer and it's a name that i've used uh, on the internet for years and years and years and years mm. and so i had an account that that i created just for following interesting people i called it thinkword and that's where the name comes from thinkword just uh following there i actually had an account called just were true and uh -huh. I, I let it go i deleted it uh because i was never on there so the official account is now gone, but so it's just think worth it. Nice. I love getting these little bits of lore. Um, yeah, it's such a random thing. You know, it, it doesn't really have any great significance. Yeah. Um, I think someone said in German, word, words means maybe craft or create. Uh -huh. So it's like, what were you trying to say? Create thinking or create thoughts? And I'm like, no, no, no. that's, not, that's <laughs> right. not it. That's a better story. That would be cool. Than I have, but yeah, no, that's not it. Yeah. See, oh, someone thought it was a play on the German Dinkwort in the sense of think worth. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, worth. Uh, that, yeah, but no, no, that's not it. Um, Riddle Doodle asks, where do you get your whimsy inspiration? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I you know I, I was talking earlier about that. Um, that, well, that twelve-year-old boy, uh, and I think that's that's part of it. Just that that creativity, um, uh, and thinking about things in, in different and, and strange ways, a little bit off kilter. Um, I've always been somebody who likes to kind of quip, make a little quip. Uh, I've also found humor in, in things, personifying things. So, what if this animal could talk? What would this animal be saying? Mm. If this tree could talk, what would this tree say? about this situation. Uh, I, I, I like a lot of these images where there's kind of a social interaction of some kind, you know, two trees that might be talking or, or two uh, frogs talking. And what would they say to each other? Uh, and I, you know, especially if it's something that's more modern, contemporary, you mm. know, talking about, I had a joke today about lions in a discord channel, right? Yeah, something that's that's old, but you, you mix in a new reference to something that's contemporary. Mm. Uh, but I've always liked that kind of humor. What would, you know, the up, uh, the upside down, the perspective of something from the opposite end. And I don't know if that's a uh, terribly interesting answer, but that's probably the best, the best I can come up with. I, I guess then I have a version of this question, or like a tweak on the question, which is you're talking about the, the 12 year old boy thing. And I, th I think for myself, to tap into my version of that, I'd have to like get myself in the zone a little bit. I, it's like you get used to being a different 
person, right? Um, and I guess I wonder, is that something you kind of have kept with you, you know, in like full form, I guess, or something you like went back to, like kind of reverse engineered or, or kind of rediscovered what, what that was about? I, I think it's it's pretty core to who I am. Um, I, I I don't think it took too much of a stretch right. to find to find that voice. It was it was pretty much there on the surface. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Um, w says sounds a little Aesop, a little token. The, Tolkien. The thing it made me think yeah. of actually was was Disney. Um, just because I've been uh, like early Disney, just because I've been, I've been uh, listening to this yeah. Disney autobiography, and they're talking about like the animation and yeah. So, so this is a, a random question, but have you watched Pinocchio? Yeah, yeah. The Pinocchio, uh, I rewatched. We got Disney Plus maybe a year ago. Yeah. Uh, when it first came out, and I I hadn't watched Pinocchio since I was a kid. Right. And I was just flabbergasted uh-huh. uh, by that movie. Because you do not know what's going to happen next. And uh-huh. there's so few movies that do that where you cannot predict at all what's uh-huh. going to happen in the next scene. Right. Uh, where it'll end up, where it will go. And it's just such a, a, a fan. I had an emotional experience watching Pinocchio that I've not had in a while because it's just so amazing. Just so, so amazing where that movie goes. It may be. I think it is my favorite of the Disney movies. So, yeah, so I, I, this is all in my mind because I, I've been listening to this book. Um, Snow White was their first feature film. Uh-huh. And there's this whole arc of the thing where it's like, you know, there's this question, like, do people, are people going to want to watch a feature film that's a cartoon? You know, like, will this work at all? And car- it, the, the way that I'm hearing this story is that cartoons were mostly used for, like, kind of just like entertainment, like song and dance, like Felix the cat type stuff. And, um, but then apparently at the, at the premiere where like Clark Dick Gable was at the premiere of Snow White, um, uh, people were crying, you know, because, you know, like Snow Snow White, it seems like she's dead, you know, all these bad things happen and they've got like Grumpy coming out and Grumpy's been like this, like, you know, he's grumpy, right? And then Grumpy starts crying and there's this question of like, can we, make tragedy with a cartoon um and the uh the thing i remember about pinocchio also because i think pinocchio is like the third one they made the second was bambi um that uh there was a lot of debate about the character of um jiminy cricket and um apparently early versions of the cricket looked too cricket like and then they finally, you know, a little creepy, right? <laughs> um, right? An actual, like, insect. And then they basically just kind of made him, like, a guy and a, a little green guy in a, in a suit. Um, and the, the last bit I'll mention is that uh, the character of Thumper I, apparently has some relation to Jiminy Cricket as the kind of um, wiser figure that's guiding the innocent uh, protagonist. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think if, if maybe Pinocchio would be better without Jimmy Cricket. <laughs> right. Uh, he, he is kind of a counterbalancing force, but he holds back the anarchy, and the anarchy is what's what's interesting about Pinocchio. Uh-huh. Uh, but I, I suppose that's maybe a an idle question. I don't have an answer to that. Right, right. Um, well, it's this whole, whole like kind of morality play in a way. Right, right. Yeah. And with the, the Blue Fairy at the end and all that. Right, right. I'll have to rewatch it. That, that's uh, I appreciate the review. That, that does make me want to watch it again. Um, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna give the second call for Collins. If anybody wants to wants to jump in the in the chat to to you know speak on voice, um, but strictly optional, of course. Um. I think there was some questions on Twitter too, weren't there? Yeah, yeah. Let's look at those. So. All right. Well, Luthros asked, "What's the most innocuous behavior you can't stand? And what does that say about you?" Um, I don't know. I was um, mentioning Starbucks earlier, and somehow uh, uh, we have a lot of Starbucks in town that are shut down, and or they'll they'll be shut down for a few days at a time, 
or they'll turn off the um, call ahead apps. Mm. And I don't know what's going on. I, I think it must be a staffing issue, but I don't understand with the current economy, you think you could find staffing, mm. uh, but it may be just because of what they have to, to pay them that they can't afford more staff. But anyway, it irritates me that they have lines around the block. Uh-huh. But I want to get my morning espresso, and it seems they're always overstaffed, uh-huh. understaffed rather. And what, um, what does that yeah, say about you? innocuous and petty, so yeah, yeah <laughs> I'll go with that. You go with that one. W- what does that say about you? <laughs> uh, that I'm addicted to caffeine. Big uh, yeah. Probably the the problem. The, the, trying to get my fix uh, before I head off to work. Right, right. Um, where's the strangest place you thought of a caption for a picture? This is from Meta Jess. Um. You know, when I did the, the ThinkWork games, I one of my the where I did most of my composing or thinking through was on on nature nature center walks. I go go to the nature center. Uh, I have a, a nice big walking stick that I I take with me, uh-huh. and I go for a walk for an hour or two, and and just try to plan and think through everything as I'm as I'm walking. So if this happens, and this has to happen, and then we have to have a choice here. So what's the choice here? And, and so that that was um, a, a nice way because I was just composing it in my head as I was walking. Mm. With the with the pictures, I have to be kind of looking at them, so it's not really about the location so much. Um, I pick up the twins uh, from their kindergarten every day, and there's a car line, and if you don't get there by three ten, then you're five blocks away, and right. you don't get the girls until four fifteen. So right, I have to I have to get there a half hour early. And as I sit there for half an hour, that's where I end up writing almost, uh, not almost all, but but many, very many of the tweets. Just sitting in my car waiting for the girls right. to get out of school and um, pull, pull, pull a bunch of tweets together. Right. I had the, the tweet I posted this evening about the uh, the crown and the frog and the berries. That was just today when I was waiting for the girls uh-huh. to be picked up from school. When you post the like thousand tw- tweet thing, do you just do it all at once, like hit send on your computer or in batches. I'm just, I'm just curious about that technical detail. The 10 PM tweet is uh, through Hootsuite. Right. Uh, and I plan those out several days in advance. The, everything else is, is done manually through my phone. I have it sitting in my drafts and I'll try to kind of space out two hours at least right. between the last tweet and a, a lot of it just kind of depends on my schedule. On Tuesday, Thursdays, I teach from 11 to 2. So it's it's uh, hard to get in a tweet in there. Right. Um, but uh, otherwise, it's just kind of when I find time and there's enough space right. between them. The um, a Riddle Doodle asks, what's your favorite children's book? Hmm. I'm pretty interested in, in this one as well. I recently went back and reread Redwall series, mm. uh, the anthropomorphic mouse, and boy, those books still hold up. Those are still, still really good. I read so many of those uh, um, books. Uh, I've tried to get my daughter to read them with me a few times, and yeah. she keeps resisting. Yeah, uh, she's nine, so we're, we're, I'll try to get. Maybe right. she turns ten. Uh, but yeah, I, I real uh, I remember rereading those fairly recently. Yeah. And, and really liking them. It's interesting. Yeah, I, I love Redwall. Now that I'm, now that we're talking about like with the ages and when you read different stuff, I'm realizing that I I read um, Ender's Game. I think it was in fifth grade, and yeah. s- some of those books are like kind of, it's like kind of heavy. Um, yeah. I don't know. Do you have an opinion on that or like a? Oh uh, well, I I mean I I think I was the same. I uh, fifth sixth grade I was reading right two hundred three hundred page novels and. And consuming them, I, I think I read Lord of the Rings when I was in the sixth grade. Yeah, wow. Um, but uh, I probably had more of an education of the way the world works than my parents may have realized uh-huh. uh, reading some of these more adult, right. adult novels right. uh, at that age. But I was a, a voracious, voracious reader, just reading all the time, all the time. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, I think I read, I, I also read Lord of the Rings. It was like around seventh grade. And I liked The Hobbit a lot better. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I when I 
first read it, I got to the part where the very last book and they're on the plains and it's just so desperate. Mm. And I got so sad that I, I stopped reading. Oh. And then and then I, a few months later, I tried again. I started from the beginning. I read book one, I read book two, and then I got the same spot. I'm like, uh-huh. oh, this is just too depressing. Uh-huh. And finally, the third time, I just went back to the same spot. And of course, it's only a few pages after that that everything turns out so great, so wonderful. Right. Uh, but I, I was so discouraged by how bleak the situation was for Frodo uh, and Sam that I quit reading. Yeah. Uh, and then I finally, finally got through it. You got to you gotta take them out of there. You got to get them yeah, through. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, let me see what other Twitter questions we had. Um, maybe ask, do you experience all thought in flashes of strange vintage imagery? Uh, uh, no. I guess that's <laughs> probably the, the truthful answer to that. Yeah. Right. Um, the... Uh, uh, Tor- Torval asked, do you feel like riffing on Sop- Sophocles and or Bacon for a bit? Sophocles or Bacon? Um... Or just if you, my, my own, my own, you know, modification would be, I'm kind of just curious to hear a little bit more about like what you're interested in literature wise. Um, if that's well, not too broad. Um, uh... I have a, a PhD in um, British Romantics and literature, and I'm teaching a class in Romantics this semester for the first time. So uh, I, there was a, a guy in our department, a uh, senior fellow, and he, he his area was British Romantics. And so for eight years, I've been waiting in the wings uh-huh. to take over. And so I finally, this semester, he's retired, and so I've, I've got my chance in it. So uh, right now, I am just... Uh, neck deep and and byron and shelley and keats and jane austen and, uh-huh. and uh kind of re rereading all these these greats and just plugging away at them and that's kind of where my headspace has been the last month and a half uh-huh. is deep deep in the the british romantics and what's the i guess can you give me like a little bit of a window into what the academic world is like in that part of academic subject matter like is the do you write about them right um i would say the average person in the field would yeah um the way i would describe it i i work at a very small private liberal arts college that you've never heard of yeah uh, in the midwest and uh it's mostly a teaching college so i ended up i i teach five classes a semester mm-hmm. and i don't really do much writing uh really i that's probably uh bad to admit but i, I don't do much academic writing uh if you were a person in a standard university you would be and you'd be getting uh, some fellowships and posting and trying to do those kind of things um but uh, i I have tenure and I don't need to do that. Don't so I don't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, my position is, is secure. And so I've, I've got, I can kind of do what I want. And um, I've got a nice little bubble where I'm at and I have a lot of independence where I'm at and I, I like it. Yeah. It sounds great. Um, yeah. The, yeah, man. I mean, a, a thing I think about a lot is just how, how astoundingly good, some some of these writers are and just yeah. like the just the uh i have a blog post i wrote about michelangelo where it's just like i'm just thinking about this you know just the like absolute power of like the human mind you know to produce some mm-hmm. of these great works and it's just uh mm-hmm. you know and then you're like i'll write a story <laughs> you know it sort of yeah. it doesn't land quite the same and so you're you know it's part of the part of the part of life you know as, as yeah. a person who tries to create things um well we are getting close to our time i'll keep you on as long as as you're willing but i do want to be able to get you out of here um and back to your life and family uh in a timely fashion so um you know unless you have a you know uh more more time falling out of falling out into your hands somehow we could wrap up this section of the thing 
um, or maybe even grab a final question from the audience if anybody has something that they've been holding on to. Well, I have a nine-year-old who's supposed to be in bed, so I think maybe one more question. Yeah, we could do that. Perfect. Riddle. What do we have here? You know what? Why don't you pick one from the ones that that are getting? Uh... Let's see. Favorite poet would be William Blake. I, um, in fact, if you've seen my biography, uh, what's it called? It's a little bio on Twitter. It's a play on William Blake. Uh, the thing I wrote is the um let's see the tigers of wrath are wiser than the horses of instruction which is a blake quote and then i have the play about the uh, spiders of math are, are wiser <laughs> than at, at the courses of deduction which is just a silly little phrase i've added onto it uh -huh. but that's where that comes from it's a william blake quote the first part and then a silly part that i've added on to the end so blake is my favorite poet what advice do you have to young people Oh, um, what makes you think I'm not a young person? I'm only <laughs> 44, aren't I? Aren't I young uh, too? Um, you know, keep 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 your health and um, follow Thinkword on Twitter. That's, uh, that's a, <laughs> once the thing gets your daughter's love that you hate, the kindergartners love Blippy. If you don't know who that is, you are lucky. <laughs> Blippy is an exceedingly annoying YouTube personality. And I don't see, I don't get what they see in him, but they love him. Well, uh, he's uh, sounds -L -I -P -P -I, horrible. A I P P I Blippy. And, uh, yeah, it's cursed knowledge. Do not look up Blippy. <laughs> you are better off for not knowing who Blippy is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was there a question that I missed in there? I think that's about it. Yeah. Well, I probably need to get my daughter to bed. All right. Thank you so much for your time. This was fun. I'm really glad to have had a chance to chat with you, well, and, you. And, and bring you How to the people. Did, we got maybe halfway to Porto. Okay. Yeah, yeah something like that. 40%. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, man. Thank All you right. very much. No problem. Okay. Good night. Good night. Guys, we did it. We had think we're on um, philosophers on Twitch playing Flight Simulator. Good night. That was great. I, I'm a little bit judging myself as an interviewer because I was kind of like, bleh, bleh, but like, Zach says that interview filled me with joy. Yeah, I. I feel like for a lot of it, we had like 35 people in chat and it was just like dead silent. I feel like just people were just chilling and just like listening to the man himself. Suddenly wholesome man appears. What do I do? Every interview fails in some manner unless you're Steven Sacker type. I don't know. I don't even know who that is. I did ask on Twitter who are the best uh, interviewers because I've been thinking about this. You know what I mean? We all, of course, like Vecnan as an interviewer. Not as a person. Just as an interviewer. Um. <laughs> you consider him an aspirational figure. I just like... It, he... I guess this is... He, he may see this later. We got a couple... A new follow. Who dat? Um... The martial arts book I recommended on stream a while back, that was probably... There's one called American Samurai. Um, oh, yeah, by the way, follows I missed. Thank you, Nausicaa Sun and Mystic, Mr. Mystic Shorts for the follows. Great to have you guys. Um, whoever wrote this book called American Samurai, it's him, but it's the other one. It's Moving Through Stillness. I think we're at the salt of the earth, but also in the sky. Yeah, I, he kind of... I just, I don't know. He's got a great voice. He's got great energy. Tenured in, uh, what did he say? English literature? Welcome to this podcast. The dude on Hot Ones. The dude on Hot Ones always gets love. What are you saying? Sean Evans. 
Wait, are you guys saying the same things as each other? On what the hell is happening? Who's Sean Evans? Thanks for the follow, John. What's up, man? Hot Ones is a show. Okay. <laughs> oh, I see. The Hot Ones guy. I, I have these moments where I'm like, did I just have a stroke? And that was just one of them. I'm just seeing all the words and I'm like, yeah, I can intelligibly work them out. He interviews people while making them increasingly spicy wings. That's funny. Someone, th I don't know, put it in the Discord or something. I'll watch some shit. Um, keep your health and follow Thinkwort on Twitter. I'm going to tweet that. Thinkwort's advice to young people tonight on Pot Fuss. Amazing. Just had to get that out there. New reason to achieve fame is to appear on Hot Ones. Totally. It seems like a good premise. I like the, the Hot Wings thing. If you guys aren't trolling me. If you're not trolling me. Chrissy Bezos announced he's stepping down as Amazon CEO. Thought you might want to know. Oh, no, I know. I know. Yeah. We, we got a new guy. Yeah, Vecton, send me a link. Is it on YouTube? I could watch it on YouTube. I'm in this wacky plane. Yeah, we, I could, we could do a React video. I don't know. Is that kind of... I feel like that, the, that kind of shit's kind of boring sometimes. I heard Sean say he watches old interviews where the interviewer stepped on something the guest was excited about. Then he asks about that. That's pretty good. I like that. Watch it on 2x speed. I think if stuff's on YouTube, I can put it up here. Good night, Wandre. Thanks for coming by, man. All right, well, we, we've got a little bit of time here. So we could, I don't know, we could do some fucking watch some videos together. I'd be down. We could also do calls. Zach says, a lot of people have been on Hot Ones. You should check if your favorite actors and musicians have been on. Yeah, it's interesting. Should I just pause the plane? Shia LaBeouf? Yeah, I don't like Shia LaBeouf. You guys should just ask me my opinions on celebrities, and I'll just tell you. That's a game I would play. <laughs> Actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf. I do fucking love that video. That video is, is amazing. I put the most recent episode in the Discord for you, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart's okay. Aaron Taylor Johnson. Never heard of him. Jude Law. I don't know why. I feel like he looks like a Nazi. That's what my brain says. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. <laughs> That's what my brain says, though. Uh, I do want to see that one... Harry Potter movie where he's young, uh, young Dumbledore. I like the idea of young Dumbledore because you're like, what's he going to be like? Paul Rudd is funny. I think Paul Rudd is funny, though weird. I know a guy who looks exactly like Paul Rudd. Eric Andre, I don't love that type of humor that's like extremely like psychotic, but some of it is very funny. I just don't find it extremely funny. That's my. Coyote Peterson. Never heard of Coyote Peterson. These sound like fake people. <laughs> what do you mean, what's his number? What's whose number? Kanye West is my favorite. Riddle Doodle. What are you, what are you saying to me? What, the guy who looks like Paul Rudd. <laughs> Look, I'll, I'll say this. He's big on Twitter, actually. <laughs> and he does psychology stuff. And I will say no more. <laughs> and I will neither confirm nor deny my judgment. But when when you see it, <laughs> when you see it, you'll be like, it's fucking Paul Rudd. 
Um, Kevin Spacey, great actor. Full stop. He's a very good actor. I was not asked about his personal life. I don't know about his personal life. At acting, he's very good at what he does. Riddle Doodle, I'll DM you. Um, Gordon Ramsay's not an actor. Is he? What is Gordon Ramsay? Oh, he's okay. My, uh, my, my, um, what do you call it? My steak cooking technique comes from Gordon Ramsay, and I cook the best damn steak you've ever eaten. Um, therefore, I like Gordon Ramsay. Mishima, not a celebrity exactly. Used to be a celebrity. But I mean, you know, Mishima's good. I, I I don't know as much about Mishima's direct works for what it's worth. I know more about his life and what he was into and what he was about. I actually have not read too much of his stuff. I read some of Sun and Steel. Mishima's an actor too. I haven't seen him in stuff. I, I, yeah, but I guess there's probably video of him. Volgafree affirms that my stakes are magnificent. It is, it is good. It is good that he said that. Everyone loved Spacey before the news came out about him being a perv. True. Uh, you need to check out Peyton Jackson, James McCready Robinson. Real person. Everyone knows, him. Everyone knows about him but you. Don't we, guys? <laughs> All right. I'm going to copy-paste that into my personal notes. <laughs> Peyton Jackson, James McCready Robinson. Dot com. Uh, read patriotism. What's what's uh, patriotism? Russell Brand, funny in some stuff, annoying in other stuff. He's funny in a movie where the joke is basically that he's annoying. I find Russell Brand annoying. Dave Chappelle, fucking hilarious. Dave Chappelle's extremely funny. Do I have a celebrity crush? Well. I do like uh, Mads Mikkelsen. I'll say that. Randomly. Apropos of nothing, I do like Mads Mikkelsen. Um, do I have a celebrity crush? Um, I mean, I don't have a crush on Kanye West, but I sincerely respect the man. Uh, I think he is underrated by everybody. Even, I mean, never mind about Kanye West. I, I, Kanye West is great. Bill Clinton. Fucking baller. Love Bill Clinton. Um, Leonard Cohen, I like his version of Hallelujah, and I like the YouTube video I saw where Leonard Cohen, uh, talks about Judaism, which is extremely powerful, and I will send to anybody who wants to see it, or if anybody asks in the Discord, it's a really crazy seven minute long speech that Leonard Cohen gives, um, basically roasting Orthodox Jews and roasting secular Jews all at once, and it's just fucking powerful, um, I was linked to it by, I think, Aria, Aria, on Twitter. Um, I think that's who it was. It might have been Dan, Dan listens to. I don't remember. Some concerning stuff about Shia came out recently, too. Yeah, that guy's a weirdo. Daniel Craig overrated or underrated? I think the world likes Daniel Craig, so I'm going to say well-rated. I think he's good. I like Daniel Craig. I think he showed... I liked that he what he did in um, that movie that's basically Clue. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, Read Patriotism by Mishima. I like that you sent me the PDF. I will open that and take a look later. Looks dope. Short story. Even better. I love short stories. The short. Um, Hugh Dancy. What the fuck's... Dude, you know all these people I've never heard of. Who the hell's the Hugh Dancy? Is that like Peyton James Jackson, James McCready Robinson? Who is this guy? Who's Hugh Dancy? What the hell is this guy in? One of the UK's most noted young talents. Oh, he's in Hannibal. I've actually never seen Hannibal. So I do like Mickelson. Favorite Twitter celebrity? Let me think about that. I'm going to think about that while I switch to a fighter jet. Does Twitter celebrity mean a celebrity that's on Twitter or like Twitter Twitter badass? I feel like you mean like a Twitter badass. Yeah, Knives Out. Thank you. Daniel Craig was, was pretty great in Knives Out because he had a great accent. 
And listen, I'm not the best judge of actors in the entire universe. I'll just say that I like that he had a badass accent in that. So I'm going to just spread my volume settings a little bit. I stand Anna K. <laughs> She was seven acts of worship is gorgeous. Put all this shit in the in the Discord. I don't know, someone who you're a fan of because Twitter is what I had in my let me think about that. Like I I like okay. There are people in my area that I like, like that I like, right? I like finding just wacky shit on Twitter. Like, I'm not gonna I I don't by any stretch of the imagination idolize the guy, but DR twenty two that shit's just wacky, and I think I under, I get what he's doing now. But just encountering uh, DR22 early in my Twitter experience was like, what the fuck is this? I like that experience. Um, there's some of these, like, accounts that are, like... They tend to be, like, hot women who do comedy. I have mixed feelings about some of those accounts. It, it's, not, it's not about the gender. There's some weird energy. I don't know how to describe what I'm saying. And I'll probably be drawn and quartered if I try to express a coherent opinion when I don't have coherent thoughts. But um, that's what I don't... I don't know. There's, it's powerful, too. They're funny, too. Like Dana, whatever. She's funny. She's funny. Maybe evil, but funny. Maybe maybe I'm being weird, though. Um, hot women Twitter comedy often feels weirdly aggro to me, but also funny. Yeah, some of that shit's hilarious. Yeah, is it, like, aggressive? It's, like... I don't know. There's something that I... Modesty. I don't know, man. No no one's gonna get far by trying to promote an opinion about, like, modesty, because everyone thinks you're some kind of, like... None. But, um... Being funny girl on Twitter... I mean, smart funny girl on Twitter is, like, a superpower, yeah. I mean, Ayla's got the the smart the smart hot thing going on, and everyone loses their fucking minds about her, which is, in its own way, magnificent to behold. Just the there's like an Ayla derangement syndrome. I want to think about your question more, Malty, about like Twitter crush. It would be like a Twitter crush. I don't know. I mean, there's people I like. And I'm thinking not just people I like. I'm thinking, like, their content. You know, their shit that I like. I don't know. Thinkwort's got great shit. I really like, I like Thinkwort. <laughs> if it's me, you can say so. Malti, you have a great account with great content, and I love your dog. You have a wonderful dog. Nemo is so flattered. You would post as much dog content as you can. I will like watch your little dog like run around as much as I can. I've crushed on a non Twitter accounts before with cartoon AVIs. Yeah. Honestly, dude, I, I like... Reva's pretty cool. Reva Tez is pretty cool. She's got a cool... She's like... I, 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 I like kind of know her in real life, but like... Um, the... Uh, she's got some fucking hilarious takes and is pretty willing to be like... Offensive in a way that I don't find annoying. Um... What's her at? Reva Tez. I'm going to type it. Something like that. She's great. It works at like IBM or something. Um, BAP is the Twitter crush after double dosing pre workout. Double dosing what? Trend. You on Trend, bra? Yeah, dude, I, I'm pretty sure IBM exists. Should we watch a YouTube video? I'm down. I'm down. 
How do I... Should I just leave this plane here making noise? I'm down. Let me just turn down the, uh, the flight sim. What did you guys want me to watch? Hot Wings, the show? Hot Ones. Oh, I see. That's uh, Priyanka Chopra. Paul Rudd. We could watch Paul Rudd. I'll watch... Let me look at his channel. Hot Ones. Alright, fuck it. Let's watch... Let's watch Paul Rudd. How do I do this? Um, let's do another... Uh, let's do a little uh, window capture. Add source. You'll stay for this. Alright, man. Glad to have you. Sticking around for the for the Paul Red for the Paul Rudd portion of the show. Why is this bad? I don't want this to do it like this. <laughs> By the way, you get, you guys should all start streaming. I want everyone here to start a Twitch stream so I can have like Twitch stream bros, and we can like host each other on our shows and like just hang out, man. Streaming, stre streaming. Do this. It's a, it's a, uh, yeah. it's like a weather map. Uh, like a storm's coming. Wait, 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 wait. Not ready yet. Not ready yet. Do it like this, and then I'm gonna put my face in front of it. Here we go. Cool. And then uh, <laughs> category seven. You guys can hear this. What's up, Snap? Nah. We're watching hey, what's YouTube. Going on, everybody, first we Hold on. I feel like this guy's jumping on my show. This guy, Sean Evans, is jumping on my show. Vogel Freight, you're, you're pretty good at Vidya. All right, you guys can hear. All right, let's do this. Oh, he sells the hot sauce. I wonder how good of a... I wonder how much he gets paid for that sponsorship. That's what I want to know. We should send you the hot sauces. You can do your own hot ones for Twitch someday. I would fucking... I would totally do it. It's sort of a lot of work to get all those sauces... I feel like if um, I could get like a sauce flight, you know, if you, you they probably sell a sauce flight together, right? We need another YouTube video. Can I play this John Wick music on my shit? Because this dude has this John Wick remix that is sick. And it's right here. I think I've played it before. Oh shit, he got Shaq. <laughs> That's funny. He got Eric Andre. Oh, he's got Harry Potter. Charlie D Oh, that's the guy from Sunny Stone Cold Steve Austin. These are some great guests. Holy shit. Ken Jong. He's part of the company. Their whole show is by the company, so they're promoting their own sauces. Is that true? Oh, look, someone found the meme. The legendary birth of Paul's greatest meme. Look at us. Hey, look at us. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? Not me. There you go. <laughs> Abu Raya, yeah, dude. I know what you're talking. Dude. Don't even say that. Don't even say Abu Raya to me. Vogel Fry and I used to uh, get some serious Japanese fried chicken. How does this work? First we feast. The show with hot questions and even hotter wings. First we feast presents hot ones. Maybe it's on Wikipedia. Karagi! <laughs> From the ones I've seen, a lot of people say that the second or third to last one is the worst because it's got a tang to it or something. That sounds that sounds painful. 
The Tang. The Tang. Yo, I'm gonna show you guys some shit. I can show you guys some shit. Um, I'll show you my watch history. I don't care. Um, I did watch it. I did watch some James Stuber videos. I did take a look at these. Uh, I watched my own videos. Hose in my room by Ludacris. Great. I've been watching this Kanye West. I'm, I'm actually much further through it than this one. <laughs> Snap, yeah, yeah, dude. I, I've been, I've been, I've been returning to the to the greats. This is the Kanye interview that I sent to you, Vecton, and told you to watch. We got some filthy Frank in here. Ravioli, ravioli. Some cyberpunk music. It's a lot of music. You watched it, good, good. Uh. How do I go to favorites? Uh, I think this is not the account that I Welcome use. To this podcast. Oh, we gotta follow. Mr. Absurd. Thanks for joining us, man. Welcome. These are my favorites. <laughs> Some Peace Walker back. Okay, I just don't know what gets me kicked off because of Terms of Service. I totally... I will, I'm will. i gonna put some Peace Walker shit in the... Uh, in the fucking Discord, because it's great. Um, this is some some cool shit. Let me just throw this in the Discord. Where's the Discord? I don't know, general, I guess. Why not? I can't hum it good, but it, but it is good. I can switch to my other... switch to my other account. Um... A lot of music. A lot of faves. Um, I can get you something good here. You see, I'm a Kanye fan. Dog. All I do is think about Kanye West. I've been chewing through his interviews. I've watched like 10, 10 hours of videos in the last uh, few weeks or more. Make us laugh. You're the clown, baby. Vogel Freight, thanks for coming by. Great to have you, dog. Have you watched All Gas, No Breaks? No, I don't know what that is. Bro. Here, look. For example, Shrek 2 DVD menu with Donkey. What title is that? What about Shrek 2, Day of the Donkey? Oh, boy. Oh, Shrek 2, The Donkey's Revenge. This is going to be a problem. What about Shrek 2, uh... Too fast, too donkey. donkey. Just eat your goobers and shut your gob, okay? How about Shrek 2, a donkey will rise or... No. Give us a uh. break. Or something like Shrek 2, the, the yeah. fellowship of the donkey. Please. Well, this close to glue. Or Shrek 2, uh, the donkey can't get like that. Original. Just be quiet. Or Shrek 2, the dead donkey is oh, This no. is torture. Or Shrek 2, the, the real jackass movie. What? No, no, no. no. How about this? Shrek 2, donkey reloaded. No! no. Come on, work with me! How about this? Shrek 2, dude, where's my donkey? Oh, there he is, cut from the movie, because he talks too much! <laughs> what kind of title is that? Yeah, dude, DVD menus. What is Far, Far Away Idol? Yeah, dude, the donkey's Eddie Murphy. Did you just realize that? <laughs> This one's very funny. This one's very funny. We can just watch some cute shit. There you go. I'm not a Shrek fanatic. I'm, no, me neither. Look at this squeaky little dude. Dogs are clearly related to bats. This is why we have COVID. It's happened in 2016. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> they're very squeaky. You see that you think they're cute, and then it wrecks your whole society for a year. I remember chiptune music blaring from key gen programs. You had to get off the pirate bay. No. I don't know what that is. I, I pirated a lot of stuff in my day. 
I was a Kazaa user. I was a Napster user. I was a Kazaa, Napster, LimeWire. Alright, chill with this this fucking bat. LimeWire, yeah. I used to have so many. Hey, I've got a favorite. Snap now. I'm gonna play some favorites. I'm gonna play some some of our favorites for the for the crew. This is a favorite. I'm releasing this meme into the wild. MD, what's up, baby? I... So hold on. This is Cedric MacMillan, is a uh, famous bodybuilder. MD, what's up, baby? I got my little man right here. What's your name? Uh, Dante Reese. Dante Reese. Dante. Dante Reese. What you know about bodybuilding? Uh, I know they're a lot. They got a lot of big dudes. And stuff. A lot of big dudes. That's right. Hey, what's your favorite bodybuilder? Who is he? Uh, James, James Arnold. Cedric MacMillan. Cedric MacMillan. Cedric MacMillan. Cedric MacMillan. <laughs> Cedric MacMillan. Oh, Cedric MacMillan. Cedric MacMillan is your favorite bodybuilder. <laughs> I had to kind of force it out of him, right? <laughs> Man, get out of here. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. MD, what's up, baby? <laughs> Who's your favorite bodybuilder? James Arnold. <laughs> Get me out of here. This arm is enormous, yeah. <laughs> Guys, uh, oh wait, did, did, did you put a link in here, Fool Jeff? Let me click that. I know, I feel it. Oh no. <laughs> what am I looking at? I don't know if you all can feel it or not, but we've been triggered. America has been triggered. And we're here to take a stance against the left. I feel it. I just feel it. I haven't even went past the first page. Too political. Too political. I'll watch it later. I just uh, too much political shit, man. In my in my life and in my brain, I, I will watch it later because it does look funny. I believe you. That's funny. I just can't think about that shit. Uh, not that I have a better idea for, for for what to do. Here, let's watch this little puppy with the hiccups. All right, all right, squad. No, I know it's super fucking cute. How are you guys all doing? How's everybody doing? <laughs> Wait, I've got another meme for you. I don't care how you're doing anymore. This is from Bloodborne. It's not gonna make sense to anybody. Has anybody in the chat played Bloodborne? Lethros, I know you played Bloodborne. Fool Jeff, all right. If we've got at least two people and me in the chat, and Snapco's played Bloodborne, so we're playing this. all been educated <laughs> I think we lost a couple follow viewers <laughs> it was too loud uh, a lot of good shit but a lot of its music hey look Alexander Technique. See, I was into it before it was cool. <sighs> well, friends, I'm thinking about calling it here. As, uh... I don't know. I feel like we, I feel like we hit all the, the main, main beats we wanted to hit. We got Think Word on. I could fly some plane a little more. Um, how are y'all feeling? Snap Canal, what are you linking me? 
bit of fun time. Dope. Um, <laughs> nah, I can't put that on. <laughs> I can't put that. Um, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I can, I'm not putting it on. Um, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, dude. No, so we're, we're going to get, I believe we've got Divya Eden next week. After that, I don't have it super locked down, but we'll, we'll find some cool people. If you guys have anybody, anyone who's still hanging on, by the way, thanks for chilling. It's always great to have you guys. I feel like you're my, my crew, you know, in like the airplane sense and in a deeper sense than that. Um, if there's anybody who you think would be a good a good pick, let me know or just at them and tell them to go on my show. That would be pretty good. When is Celine coming out? Good question. I gotta figure that out because Celine's gotta have a baby, and I feel like uh, I feel like after baby she'll be not, you know busy. Celine was good, yeah, for sure. Get her before Babby comes. Does anybody know when Babby's coming? Thank you, Mister Absurd. We do we do try for it, even when the. Uh, even when the plane's going like this. Just chilling. End of the month. Oh, oh there, oh there. Reestablish control. Mid to late February. Um, that's super soon. <laughs> yeah, cool. All right, well, I'll, I'll ping her and see what's up because that could be fun. Um, I'm, I'm actually gonna be on Eigen's fucking thing um next week i don't even know if he knows what he's getting into because he's literally has like seven interviews scheduled for one week and he might just be planning to release this stuff completely unedited which is which is wild um i don't know if you guys saw he's doing that but i'm looking forward to seeing what he makes he's got some cool people like me on it you know what i mean so it's gonna be a great podcast um Yeah, I'll take a look. I'll take. A, I'll, I'll see what's up with Celine. Yeah, man. It is no. I, I I love it. That's what I'm saying. I I just want everybody to. Okay, I, I'm like a little bit joking with everybody should start a Twitch channel because it is like a little bit of a pain in the ass and it's not for everybody. But I just want us to make more cool shit and like hang out and then do the do the in person chilling when we can. Plague permitting. Know what I mean? Dope. All right, calling it here, ladies and gentlemen. Great to have you. Have a fine evening. And when I uh, get my wings, I will post a picture on Twitter of my wings, just so that you guys can see that I was not I was not bullshitting you. Always great to have you. It was great to have everybody. <laughs>